Let's have <laughs> let's have some reminders from last session, shall we? Uh, where did the inbred pirate come from? I don't know what you're talking about. That's just my general ambiance. <laughs> pirate. <laughs> Matty wants to message the rest of the squads. Quattlemox is blind. I think he exploded. All of it. Uh, Nazim's <laughs> forbidden war law, uh, square brackets, his words, is temporary. Yes, yes. yes That's valid. actually extremely valid because Jon Nicholas would keep that forever if we didn't alert him. Uh, Cusco is enjoying <laughs> punching in. through the building's fragile wall. Oh, yeah. Quote, blow the bloody doors off, end quote. Uh, and we never get to touch the doors. Penultimately, the squad has stopped in the artery from an anti building attached to the main anomalous power plant, at least per your initial report. Well, that's right. I was about to blow the doors, wasn't I? Uh, and no, the final bit in, is just a general reminder. Uh, sorry, a general objective reminder. Of your general objective. Objective reminder, what? Just destroy the children actor? Uh, yes, so your general objective is... You don't have to you destroy to, it necessarily, sorry. Yeah, you're, you're, Save bas- it. you're basically here to make the... Um, What's it called? Uh, to, to ease the invasion by any means possible. You are authorized up to any and all casualties with no limits. Uh, but yes, you are to blow up whatever you can, whenever you can, in any way. Well, to it disable is. the shields to allow so, the full might if, of the if, legions to descend. If I remember rightly, I was the one who was first in the line. I think I was at the doors. So I turn around to uh, Brother Sergeant um, Nazim. I walk through the wall. No, no, Carl, no. It's a pair of doors. You would have to, you would have to force your way through the doors. So I think Are there are no walls by this door. No, yeah, remember, you remember door? you were in a little artery passageway <laughs> between the anti, uh, the anti building. Yeah, go, go out like the corridor wall and then forward through the <laughs> outer wall. I, I'm going to turn to. Brother, I would think of it portals. I, I turn to brother, uh, brother sergeant Nadine. <laughs> brother sergeant, I'm thinking. I open the doors, you take covering positions, and I throw an absolute ton of grenades in there. Three or four. Should be enough. <laughs> I'll raise my hand. <laughs> a ton. Three or four. Brother, are you not a trained demolitionist? Could you not merely fashion some kind of breaching charge from the crack grenades, and then we blow through into the room afterwards? Ah, you, you see, brother. You see, you see brother, Koya. Um, wait, are you Koya or Kalatamox? I am Koya. He's You're Koya. Koya. Uh, uh, you see Koya, uh, Koya. There may be lots of firepower in there, and I then gesture towards uh, Cusco. And that could happen. I suggest we throw and that. blow. C- Cusco is absolutely fine. It's Quattlemox who detonated. Um, yeah. <laughs> I stand by what I say. <laughs> you, can, you can tell by the ooze. Um, ooze. Good question. Like, yeah. um... It is the door, or are the doors, depending on like, whether it's doubled or whatever. Are they too thick for my thermal vision to see through? You, I don't think you have thermal vision specifically, uh, but yes, your your HUD's um, visors aren't detecting anything, uh, especially on the opposite side of the door. I'm afraid. Cool. Um, I like the idea, um, but maybe we should try to enter a bit more stealthily if possible. If the doors don't just open, then blast them. I want to open the door. I would attempt the door, find... but unfortunately it appears to be slightly barred from the other side. I want to pull harder. I am... Um... <laughs> Damn it! Fooled it's again! Door. He's a space <laughs> Can he just pull it off its hinges? <laughs> yes. Pull it anyway. Yeah, if he wants door, to pull it off his hinges, he can certainly try. He'll probably win. I'm just telling him that it's a push door. <laughs> okay, I'll push. I, look at, I look at Brother Koya. Would you, would you like to run? Should we, should we both run to the back of the corridor, then run towards the doors? Brother, I don't. Why would we, the two range specialists of the squad, be the ones to breach and clear the door? 
<laughs> would I not have... another me- another member of the squad, perhaps one versed Simply in melee combat, me in the right direction, brother? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> would they not be a better choice for breaching the door? It is at about this moment that Cusco, having made his intent thoroughly clear verbally numerous times over the squad mocks. Uh, Mox, Vox, attempts to walk through the door. I will take <laughs> like, Cusco. We, I feel like we've got to like, turn down to like 20% volume on all of us. So he's just like, in the background, like, being, ignoring him. <laughs> he's just <laughs> ambiently there, right? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Cusco, I will take strength at a plus zero. Uh, plus 20 from Sue. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. As you're discussing the nuances of strategy... Oh, sorry, six degrees, technically. The six nuances degrees. of strategy, tactics, and general forward, fin- uh, forward thinking, things that would really serve you in good stead here, Cusco simply walks forwards into the doors, and after... Uh, sorry, how many degrees of success was that, Carl? Six. Four. Six. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, plus two from uh, the bonus. From After a barely a microsecond walks through the doors like they're nothing so much as particularly well-carved marshmallows. You realise at this point we're averaging 0.5 Leroy Jenkinses per session, right? <laughs> yep. Oh god, he just smashed in. Well, I guess that's the way in. <laughs> um, if I hear the sounds of combat, I'm immediately going to redose on the old pain suppressors. You can certainly read out on pain suppressors. You hear no immediate sounds of combat. There is only a low humming emanating from the other room. I'm, um... Come on, brothers. Let's, let's, let's follow. I'm going to grab... Uh, 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 it? I'm going to grab Kalatomox by the arm. Sort of just gently push him through the door. That's the way you want to go, brother. Thank you, brother. Come Has on. anyone got, like, a tether we can, like, tie it around a wrist or something? <laughs> I know those so what are those stand uh, Quattlemont, Find me a guardsman. Uh, <laughs> Quattlemont, carry him before around. we uh, enter this uh, this building, I would like to ask if you would want to swap his chainsword. Uh, sorry, if I would, if he would like to swap his grenades for my chainsword, so he may have All two chainsaws. All my munitions chainsaws. are gone, brother. I'm a chainsword okay. alone. Okay. Yeah, his grenades quietly blew up in a fashion that we just politely ignored last session. <laughs> Um, yeah, already, I forgot about that. He'd already detonated once, and that felt mean <laughs> enough, you know. You have a you have a knife as well. You, you can knife and chainsaw, so you can knife knife chainsaw chainsaw. Because <laughs> you have ambidextrous. Um, I'm gonna so it stuff. sounds like Cusco uh, <laughs> is first into the room, basically. Yes. The large room that you enter, Cusco is just that, a singular large room. You may have been expecting a larger complex, a smaller series of rooms woven throughout a larger primary generator, but almost uh, surprisingly, you do not see anything that would indicate something like a power plant. Just a moment. Is it powered by Psychus? Or is it underground? No, it's, it's, uh, certainly uh, it's definitely not underground. We're several miles into the sky. Um, but you know what I meant, like on a lower miles. If you'll recall, you are thirty-five kilometers into the sky. I did uh, say several, which can mean many things. That's definitely more than several. Several is within a certain amount. You can't say several miles. Several's like a few. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Several right. miles from the sun. You're an engineer. <laughs> I know, and several is not an engineering term. It's one yeah, of your well, terms, I mean, creative writing, bitch. No, but I'm <laughs> saying it is. Creative <laughs> writing should never be compared to um, uh, Sorry, <laughs> engineering in any equal terms, this be, ever. This would be wrong in creative writing terms. The little fucking engineer. Could be. Let's, let's not get into a, into the, a creative... Inside the anomalous power plant seems to be curiously absent of any kind of infrastructure, save uh, occasionally, here and there, void shield generators. Indeed, the place seems significantly more reverent than that, strewn as it is with uh, assorted skulls, purity seals, general marks of uh, indentured faith. And hey, one aren't we we're supposed to be destroying the void shield generators? And one utterly absent of any human presence save servitors 
and in the very middle of the colossal central chamber, arcing up into the sky, several stories, a single human, not dissimilar to the ones that you have seen floating around the beach, annihilating your comrades with lightning and their commanded litho golems. It's a can I, like, rev Creed like a chainsaw and point him in that direction? <laughs> Just hurl him. <laughs> Just hurl him. <laughs> that one. Brothers, this one faces confusion. Is this um, not what they expect? There are several... Uh, so they're sort of sat in a... Almost like a, a colossal chandelier arrangement. There are many, many, many empty seats. Only a single one occupied by that one... Obviously sapient, non-servitorized human. Um, I have forbidden law. Uh, is it Psyker? The war. <coughs> the war. Uh, I have forbidden war, Psykers, and war right now. I'll take forbidden law, the war, but a uh, plus zero. Okay. Recommend we eliminate target with extreme prejudice. I do agree. Uh, How many bolt out the, the, the best way to interrupt this, by the way. How many bolt shells do we put into him? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think we're going for the bolt shells at this one. I think we're breaking out the crack grenades. Mm -hmm. Do I say? Um, like, do if I he's okay. in the sky... Good job. Right? Yeah, on. he's perhaps a story or two. Was right? that a fate reroll from 80 to... 32. 32, what's uh, your boss? So that's going to be... Plus is a zero, because it's yep. just uh, trained, I believe. So that means at 54 Eve, we're looking at two degrees of success. And this was off of your Forbidden Law Warp, right? Yes. Forbidden War Law. Cool. Law. Which, as I recall, was gained through the consumption of anomalous brain matter. Going mobile. Smoke. You have a distinct and overwhelming sense of importance. Colossal, all-encompassing importance as you look at this anomaly. There is something about them that registers to you as utterly, incontrovertibly crucial. And dangerous, or just crucial? Crucial. Just crucial. There is danger there of a kind. You... Can't quite pass it other than that it exists. In comparison to the other uh, people that we've seen with these sort of powers. You have not seen one of the other people with these sort of powers since you consumed the brain matter. Therefore, you have no basis of comparison. Uh, but can I compare my, knowledge, my current knowledge to uh, previous knowledge to what I've seen? It is not quite uh, the same thing, I'm afraid. Okay. Like, uh, if it was knowledge that you had fairly sure... As it is, it's kind of like a gut feeling that flashes over your consciousness. A sort of, a, almost a bad VFX effect. You have yeah. little control over it, other than what your subconscious exerts. I was going to okay. ask, like, you mentioned gut feeling. Like, do, do we get that sort of, like, instinctual, this is dangerous sort of, like, predatory response? Everyone who did not consume any kind of uh, anomaly brain matter does not receive necessarily a danger sense but simply a sense that this is not right something is wrong here this is incontrovertibly incorrect uh, I'd like to really um, I've, uh, I should have done uh, who's uh, basically in charge of organizing um, this battlefront right now is it um, like this specific moment here and now uh, or, you. Or, or, no, I know that. Um, organizing all of our captain, squads. Captain. Who's, who's just like above me? Who's like your communication yeah, wise? Your captain, captain is Captain Yakatau. He is at last check, uh, twenty to forty minutes behind you. Okay. Um, I want to like obviously I'm already up to like higher ups, like whoever's like overseeing communication for the entire uh battle, and just um, I'm gonna say. Shield generator is not a shield generator. It's one of those strange tech people generating the entire force field. There are some void shield generators in here, though. We should sabotage those first. I like it. Cause a distraction. 
Um, our our yet, objectives are to disable the void shield generators. There are void yeah. shield generators in here. We should disable them. It's true. Then, then we can our, investigate. The the whole point of it is to enable us to, uh, the valve to go easier to remove the shield. They're clearly not being operated. They're what's generating it. We should go after them before the shield generators. Uh, you heard him. Like, he's, he's the one ordering us to be... Um... Uh, do we know that those other shield generators are offline? Um, the squad. Does that sound entirely correct? Like, your sergeant's definitely issuing orders, but do we really know that this guy is generating the shield all by himself? That seems entirely circumspect. Well, again, there's no guards on those other void... Brother Sergeant, there are no guards on those other void shield generators. Even if we take out whatever this thing is, and it is indeed generating a shield, there may be other ways for them to get those other generators back online. We should take out all redundancies before delivering the final blow. Agreed. Brother Coy presents valid points. Brothers, is the humming dangerous? Shall I smash it? Clattlemox <laughs> revs his chainsaw dangerously. But on that the Zeme's creature front, there is... Our priority right now. Then oh. we go for the generators. On the Zeme's front, Brother Sergeant, you know, are you disagree. really, really going to take this from them disagreeing with you? You gave a fairly basic order that seemed pretty reasonable. You wanted to vox back to command to see what they were about, uh, and then make a more informed choice microseconds from now, and your squad's urging you to go smashing shit willy-nilly? Don't listen to him. <laughs> I hate him so much. Just do what Just, you want to um, do. Seems like they're undercutting you a little bit, you know? Especially uh, those of them who have been really kind of angling for squad command. And obviously any indecision on your part, given that you all have basic squad cams, could be something they could refer back to in future. Uh, th- just double check um, for Nick. Uh, the other generators, are they operational right now or are they not? Are they on-off, basically? Currently, all generators that you can see, at least as far as you... In fact, void generators are extremely obvious, yeah. All other generators in this vast chamber are extremely operational. Like, Which case... Rough count, how many would you say there are? A couple of dozen. Uh, I'd like to... Uh, Koye? Uh, Koye? You go find the power sources and try to sabotage... The generators. The rest of us will focus this here. At once, brother sergeant. Can I roll a demolitions check to see if I can easily demolish the guy? A little. <laughs> uh, no, I mean you. I, I'm not even going to make you roll for that. Like if you successfully landed a grenade and his shield isn't particularly up, which is he seems to be focusing on something. Um, it might not be then, yeah, you could quite easily blow him up. You've seen most of the anomalies that you've fought this campaign have gone up in a cloud of gore the second you've got a weapon at them at a reasonably close range. I'm going to look down at my three crap grenades. Brother Sergeant, you wouldn't happen to have any sort of sturdy rope or anything, would you? You are taking this, Nazim? (coughs) Is it time to charge, brothers? They question you. Hold. Time. Study rope. Not that I know of. <laughs> After time, do they question? I haven't. As I haven't quite left yet, I'm still about to walk away. I would like to turn to uh, brother. Co- uh, oh, what the heck's Ollie called? Uh, Ollie, uh, Ollie Mackie. Is... Mackie. I would like to turn to brother Mackie and say, brother, use the uh, sealing agent for your suit to seal the grenades together. <laughs> ah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I, I turn to, 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 to the brother sergeant. Brother sergeant, I suggest that I glue three of these grenades together based on the other brother's excellent idea. And I launch three crack grenades at this, this, uh, this anomaly. They ain't much good for this bit for, uh, for. No, I, I agree. Um, you do that. Uh, and then, uh, I will stand next to brother Clutterbox. And on my word, we will charge. Wonderful. It's, and uh, and brother Mackie, yeah. I provide covering fire. It's oh. it is floating several stories floating up in the air. Stories up um, in the air. I'll take uh, combats and a uh, pain suppressor so I can actually kind of see. So you right. uh, brother Kuzo, be on standby, covering fire, but also um, medicate when we need it. 
But uh, what we said last uh, time, Gravelmox revs his chainsword, allowing him a measure of echolocation with which he's able to vaguely diagnose where he is in the room. The anomaly screeches as it turns to face you. I would like to say I'd already I'll have moved away now to fulfill my part of the mission. It I, 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 shrieks, lightning emitting from its mouth. Hold! No. What does it, it do? Like, it, or, it, 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 it says hold and it does nothing. A single hand leaps up lightning fast, outstretched towards the three of you. Sparks arc around and around and around the anomaly. I'd like to really concentrate on it and figure out what the fuck it's trying to do. A voice in the back of your head, Nazim, says, don't. Just don't. I'd like to really concentrate and figure out what's going on, and I'd like to but innately use glorious, reading, glorious, my psychic power. So close. I, I'm using my Father psychic Brother power. You yeah, could yeah, yeah. win this. Yeah, on, on the spot, I, I'd like Time, time slow. Stop <laughs> time using slows. psychic power to read emotions. Will then immediately tell you what to do. Time <laughs> slows exactly down to a fraction of a second. A little voice in the back of your head issues just that that single statement again and again. Don't. Why stop? You're so close to victory. All you need to do is just take what your squad says into account. Just act. Don't show signs of weakness. Don't show signs of cowardice. Just. Do. Okay, uh, I'm just getting rules up for reading. Uh, so I'm using it fettered. Uh, so basically, the psychic gains. Uh, I have to roll for it, I believe. Uh, but because it's fettered, it has one lower. So I get like a plus 10 on it, I think. Uh, Fate. Using all my fate to start with. Go on, windy headshot. There we go. There we go. Uh, so uh, the psychic gains uh, superficial uh, impressions about the targets uh, per target person. This includes three strongest emotions the subject is currently experiencing: his race, whether or not uh, he has Panic. any psychic powers, and his rough idea. Go Panic, fear, and hatred. Attack now! Charge! It's voice. floating several stories up. Covering fire! The little voice in the back of your head doesn't shriek. It just hisses. A long, delicate yes. Though he's already been possessed by a demon. I feel like I feel like Nick did like like maybe maybe that maybe that was an enemy agent and the guy floating up there's maybe a good guy is kind of what I'm getting from that. Uh, no, I, my reading was on uh, the guy in the air specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. The fact that he felt oh, fear. Yes, we were more sort of commenting out of character about how you've clearly been fucking possessed because something is fucking Sorry. stirring you up. More than oh, that, 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 that's normal. Don't, don't worry about that. Yeah, it, the fuck is it, a it, demon? Like, this is a good uh, imperial truth. Out house. of character. He, out of he character. said attack, so I am running. It's intending to try and leap at this thing <laughs> with my chains. All right, I, I go with him. <laughs> athletics at a minus 50, please, Creed. Francisco is doing things also. Can I assist him? I'm no. charging with him. What was the role, sorry, sir? Athletics at a minus 50. Athletics over uh, agility at minus 50. I don't think we have athletics, do we? I don't think we do, no. no we, we have, have acrobatics. acrobatics. Sorry, acrobatics over agility. Oh, that's minus advanced. 50. That's no fun. I'd like to roll blather. You can just run, roll strength. <laughs> you can roll blather if you like. It's not really relevant to what your sergeant ordered, but you can roll it. Uh, so, regarding the guy floating in the air, why would the guy in the in the air be telling you to shoot him because Glory's so close? Is what he I'm getting at. No, 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 that's not. Get the nips of the toilet. Roll play amongst yourselves whilst you shriek and charge. So the what voice is going on. I would like to be continuing on with my mission and blowing up the voice shield generators. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just shouting cover and uh, fire as I shoot. Nice. Uh, no, so so, so the, the, the whispers and so forth were just in the back of my head. Um, the reading, I because I use my affected psychic power that I don't yeah. know I have on the guy, the reading I got from him was that he was uh, scared, panicked, and so forth. So he's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And he said, stop. So he's obviously bluffing. 
Well, so, so like, the, way, the way it seems to me is that the voice in the back of your head said, you're so close to glory right now. Fire, kill him, kill him. He's why trying would, to hold it back. Why would the guy up there be... Uh, yeah, exactly. He's trying to hold back whatever's about to happen. It's, it's, I see no connection between... In, in and out of the character, it, it's like... If it is a chaos demon whispering, yeah? Hmm. Okay. In this current situation, looking at it from a logical point of view, um, if the guy up there is panicked and scared, and also he's generating the field, we should probably kill him. But why would his voice be be, be telepathic? I'm, I'm not presuming it's his voice at all. You know, the only thing I have quibbling with that entire sentence you just said is the word if. You know <laughs> it's a chaos demon. <laughs> <laughs> talking yeah. I, I quoted the line, uh, if it is a chaos demon, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll also just be you and fucking with us. Um, I, 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 I think I ever I, fucked with you. I feel like you. Uh, we may have just walked into a, a classic you and Gardam. A oh, also, well, it, I would it's have awesome. needed a one. I, I, I can't be pausing and so forth when ordering commands. No. I need to go go. So unless you want me to ponder for another twenty minutes. No, 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 no. no, no. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> We can't have. It's. It's. Uh, can I throw a grenade up there? Can I throw a crap grenade up to him? Have I been ordered? I to think that, that was the idea, wasn't it? Ballistic yeah. skill at minus thirty. Cool. Can I? Uh, and there will oh, be. I am minus thirty. Yeah, he's well with a grenade. grenade. Um, well, there's it's straight oh. up, so there's gravity in effect, but also considering grenades are generally timed and not marine. proximity, you have to did get it, that did timing. We, but, like, we, do, so we, we established. Where are you aiming for? The, the body. The big the man. <laughs> Ballistic skill, ballistic skill at minus 10. Minus 10, okay, cool. Uh, I have... Just to double check as well whilst Ollie's rolling. Cusco, uh, so I see you rolled 55. What was that intended to be for? I oh yeah, sorry, I was covering fire. I may have been muted when I shout out. Mm. No, I had it. Am I, oh, did, okay. am I technically in cover right now? Doesn't particularly matter, honestly. But it also, does for me. Also, yeah, no, Ollie, you Ollie, not, Ollie, you're, you're a space marine. Yeah. You are walking cover. Uh, yeah, you're uh, walking cover. I'm not in cover. Okay, so minus 10. I don't think I have anything else to give so you. So what happened so is you were all discussing about standards. doing a breach and clear at that point. Cusco, in fact, slightly before that point, technically, Cusco started walking through the large wooden doors that uh, disguised your little anti, uh, anti-tunnel from that. the primary chamber. How did that get worse? Doth? <laughs> uh, five. With three crack grenades glued together. That oh, is, no. uh, per our standard, a crit fail. Mm. Rip. Would you like oh, to... Mackie's just lost both his arms and or a gun. Oh, oh god fucking... damn it. Hang about just one second, because Mackie's next to basically everyone, right? Not me, because mm. I've moved off to do my job. <laughs> I really uh, badly me... failed my charge. Badly. Oh, no. As I say, me, 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 I, I was going with uh, class marks. So. Really badly failed your charge. That sounds like it synchronizes nicely with done fucked up. Let's <laughs> just take a speedy look yeah. at the grenade. And I feel like taking two steps forwards. I'm just looking backwards like, what the fuck are they all doing? And it's just... <laughs> you turn around and the grenade <laughs> to my mag boot. I'm like, I don't know how this happened. No, you just yelled Kobe and then just fucking face planted. Kobe? <laughs> Oh. Ah, there we go. Cool. Ollie, would you like to roll me... Okay, you know what? We won't say roll 3d10 plus 4 times 3. What we will say instead is 3d10 plus 12. Yep. Pen 6. To the head. Uh, pen... What was that? Pen 6. All right. If everyone who was vaguely within range of uh, thingy Mackie, they are crack of Mackie, would like to take twenty-one points of damage, pen six to the body. That is by my count. So who do we have moved off explicitly? Um, Me. Uh, yeah. So I believe that is probably everyone who isn't either Koya or Kuzco. Kuzco who had moved off to do covering fire, and Koya had like rushed off to the side to do his. I'm a professional flanking nonsense. So it's No, I'm a professional. I'm doing what I was told. I was told to disable those void shield generators. So I'm going to go disable those void shield generators. Fair. Microseconds after that, the issue to charge and assault the floating nonsense came out. 
and microseconds after that, the unfortunate grenade explosion happens. Like I say, 21 points of damage, 6 in the body, 4 by my count, that means it's Coatlemox, Mackie, and Nazim. Well, there's like 7 crit damage for me, dog. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's make this a little bit of fun. Do you want to roll me a to hit roll, Creed? Just give us a d100 and we'll see where it lands. Yeah. Can he roll to dodge? <laughs> oh no, he can't. Crit roll as well, okay. 19. You're getting those bad rolls out of the way. Oh my god. That's good, it hit him in the head again. <laughs> no, 19, I think, is one of the arms. Oh, 19, I thought you said 90. I was yeah, like, no, 19 would be the head. Yeah, so he, he got hit in the head. He's already broken the things in his head. <laughs> 7 <laughs> crit damage as it hits you in the arm. Uh, for Ollie, what's a crack grenade? That's going to be... Explosive. Yeah, explosive. it's probably explosive, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's explosive. Yes. I shall be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you and Mitch are out now. He's just like, nah, fuck it. We were dead. Oh, done. done. Let's have a look. Okay, 7, did you say, Creed? Uh, yes. In a vile... He- a vile? Sorry. In a violent hail of flesh, the arm is blown apart. The target must immediately make a challenging plus zero toughness test, or dies from shock. On a success, the target is On a stunned. plus seven? Sorry? On a plus seven? Jesus. Plus zero. No, I mean, on a plus on a seven crit damage is an insta-kill. Yeah, on the boy. Uh, on a success, the target is stunned for 1d10 rounds, takes 1d10 levels of fatigue damage, and suffers from blood loss. He now only has one <laughs> Well, I'm just set up for the Robocop comeback when I become a full Mechanicus Tech I'm Marine. I'm yeah. really looking forward to the Tech Marine turning up next campaign with robotic eyes, robotic everything in the face, and a robotic right arm. So, um, while I'm under pain suppressors, which I'll immediately redose, stuns last a max of one round as well. <laughs> so, I'll roll the stun rounds. And then what were the other things I needed to roll? I did the toughness. Uh, other things you need to roll. Uh, you take one d ten levels of fatigue. The real question is: the real question is, what hand were you holding your chainsaw in? <laughs> no, uh, are we bred from a left-handed Primark or a right-handed? Good question. Primark? We're happy extra. It doesn't matter. No, no. Let's not no, check. Depends what one he was holding it in yeah. at the time. Has, oh, anyone, see. has anyone held their guns in a specific gun arm so far? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I've been going left sword, right gun. Sounds then like your sword is in your left hand. Neo. <laughs> As your right arm detonates in a shower of mist, oh, bone God. shards, and little bits of spaghetti esque viscera. Oh, uh, the the vanguard of the Emperor's legions, we are, aren't oh, we? Spaghetti esque viscera. Spaghetti. You have like like a heavy loading fucking mechanical arm after this, aren't you? Fitted. <laughs> I love the fact that Creed. going to have one with a Cortex controller in it, to be honest. I love the fact that Creed is now basically a proto dreadnought after this. They're like, mm. we've not nah, built the he's fucking around it. Need you have like yeah, an, no, an, no, an no, extra no. powerful power fist in one hand and be tumble 3.0. He's only <laughs> exploded once and lost an arm. This isn't even close to Dreadnought territory. Like, you have to physically die to get put in a Dreadnought most of the time. Uh, most of the time. Just rolling rounds for the latest dose of pain. Eight <laughs> rounds again. Yeah, and exactly, this is the thing. Creed's only died once. If he died, and then you hauled his carcass back to the ship, you could arguably get him whacked in a Dreadnought. <sighs> Stick him in a contemporary <laughs> refine. Die again, go into stasis, and we'll just take you back and upgrade you to a dreadnought. I think I we've got playable rules for a dreadnought somewhere. There are. There are. Um, yeah, um, what are we missing in terms of 30k stats? If we leave Benji with an afternoon and a Word document, he will eventually fill out something fairly appropriate and reasonably balanced. So be- Creed, do you want to be big, stompy, punchy, or big, stompy, shooty? Don't give him the choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's punchy. You know it's punchy. <laughs> um... Like, sorry, on the note of rules, what were our rulings with first aid here? Because I know that I've already attempted it once. Uh, uh, on... Once per 24 hours, per the standard. 24 hours. Uh, sorry, once per 24 hours per person, per the standard. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I remember for a while we did also do, um, we could do it multiple times, but the difficulty increased by plus 10 every time within that 24 hour period. Is it? Sure. Is there a question for the uh, 
possible change. Um, if it's a new major injury, such as crit damage and losing an arm, does it almost like, that's fair enough, you can probably treat that anew? Sorry, that's not first aid damage, that's actually counted as surgery. You can do surgery at any time, it's just modified by the crit damage. Uh, he's currently at 7 crit damage, which means his surgery rolls are at a minus 70 before any additional modifiers. Oh my god. Yeah, and like, if I was playing a standard medic, I'd already taken things like superior courage and to, like, but I'm not an actual um, apothecary yet, so I didn't take any yeah. of that stuff. Okay. It's fine. Maybe if his sergeant hadn't ordered him to charge someone three stories up in the air, he'd be alright. But sadly, this is where... He was exploded by a grenade behind him. And who's oh yeah, and the fatigue <laughs> damage. Exactly. That has nothing to do... Oh, really? Yeah, it has nothing to do with you. Whose squad did the grenade belong to? Pace, pace, pace. Says pace, the little yes, voice at the back of your mind. Oh, this is 100% within pace. So you issue the charge order, and seconds later... Quattlemox suffers a devastating blow as his right arm disintegrates. It's alright, he wasn't environmentally sealed. The last time he got him killed was already pretty damaging. <laughs> I didn't even issue the last command. Oh, he did that himself. So your squad's completely out of control. Alright, continue, Pace. Says the little voice at the back of your head as you charge forwards. Nazim alone, in fact, honestly there, because Quattlemox is undergoing agonizing pain and is momentarily stunned despite his ridiculous amounts of painkillers. And behind I him, did a uh, roll for charge. Let me do, do, do a roll for charge. And behind him, Maki was attempting to lob a series of crack grenades, which unfortunately seem to have gotten stuck on, I guess, either a bolt pistol or an upstretched arm from Quattlemox and resulted in a fervent maiming. Nazim, I will take... You're charging, right? Uh, I was charging with Quattlebox, yeah. yeah. Well, you're not charging with Quattlebox at this point. So I will take... Uh, what's your primary weapon here? Are we talking bolt pistol or are we talking chainsaw? <laughs> chainsaw. Chainsaw. Okay, I'll take weapon skill at minus 40, please. Minus 40. I don't know what it is. I don't know how many times I can reiterate the phrase. Or just six. The, how many times I can reiterate the phrase, th uh, phrase three stories up in the air. We've been saying it for about ten minutes now. I, I don't think he's going to get it. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't quite realise until we were charging. <laughs> it had only been about That's seven fair. minutes of us saying it at that point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what harm has he done? <laughs> As you charge forwards, only to realize that your death perception has sadly failed you. Do I laugh or do I cry? That's uh, eight. You cry stop. because we've all been up, we're all armed with bolters that we picked up earlier for precisely this situation. <laughs> I've been Indeed. shooting the fucker. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed, you are, actually. Oh, massively. 100%. Entirely. And the little voice at the back of your head there, Toya, just says, Why? None of this had to happen. This is entirely on the sergeant's direction and leadership. And you say, I have a demon in my head. You say, I have a demon in my head. You all have demons in your head. Sorry. Demon. I am my demon. Demon? What is this Theus nonsense? As I, I'm going with more of a metaphorical, you know, like inner demons like Tao. Oh, that's fair. That's, you know, you being a qualified philosopher. Greed oh, and sloth. As opposed Not Zeke. Uh, that, that's... No, no, no. Kaya and Nazim coming in here with, oh no, I feel a slight sense of doubt. It must be the voice of Satan in my mind. Point B. Nazim <laughs> charges forward. <laughs> sword upraised. And when he realizes that the enemy is further away from him than he'd initially hoped, sword down raised in a single right over sweeping swipe only to bite deep, deep, deep into a piece of miscellaneous machinery, after which the world judders and begins to slant. The floating anomaly shrieks at you. Abomination! Stop! What was that, uh... Uh, was well, that? now I'm just kind of concerned about being called an abomination. Um, but I was 
going to have a quick question about chainsaws. Is it a button, a trigger, a throttle? Like, how do you control it like, in that regard? There's a trigger. It's a bit like a motorcycle uh, it varies thing. There's a trigger on, on the thing. It varies based on... on the on current the model of chainsaw, there's a little trigger on the... On the well, we have our own special yeah, you do also ones, have anyway. your own special pattern. So I would say... Uh, discuss but we haven't got those yet, because we are still a... No, I as think, yet, I think, Pat, I think we're we, still as yet. Wait, we haven't left. We barely left Terra. Yeah, but I think we said earlier that you've got you've got Maca, like arguably. Yeah, we got have, like. But yeah, we did say you've got yeah. the Macahedal pattern chainsaws. So, what do you want, Carl? You were the first person to ask. I feel this is your choice. Do you have a button, a trigger, or a throttle? Oh God, I wasn't expecting to get any choice. <laughs> you've got exactly <laughs> I... twenty seconds to make a decision affecting all of you. Um, can we go with time. a trigger, but with a locking mechanism, like optional? How do you mean? So, like, you, you pull it down, it goes, but you can, like, click it in to lock it. All right, fair. Sure. So Basically, cruise... Basically, cruise what? Control, or...? But you oh, can now just with your hurl it <laughs> while it's still going. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can yeah, the sorry, I, I cut yeah, off yep. ever so slightly there. Basically, cruise <laughs> what? Cruise control. control. Cruise control. Okay, that makes the most sense. I heard basically cruise, and then everyone on the webcam started making weird gestures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going on a booze cruise now. I see, so you are coming to Sweden. <laughs> Change the little paddle boats. Yeah, boy. Holy fuck. So, what do anyone within the chamber? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Disabling the void shield generator. Uh, uh, I'd like something. to throw a crack grenade at the Psyker. So. No, we don't know how well that went last time. All right, yeah. I'm trying three. I'm trying to throw, throw one from below it. Ballistic a bit skill. Ballistic skill at minus ten. Uh, is it? Uh, was it strength? Oh no, it is. Uh, the strength was just blind, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's just tucking it. Like blindly hot lobbing into a crowd that you basically can't miss. This is hitting a specific target. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, body as well. What do we get? Just to be honest, you really should be using frags for these. This is an anti-personnel check and not an anti-material check. More damage. Yeah, he really, really should be, shouldn't he? But he yeah. doesn't seem to be. It's a single target. I don't need AoE. Doesn't matter if it's a yeah, single target. Exactly. It's frags or anti, frags or anti infantry, <laughs> cracks so or anti material. Uh, cracks so do more damage, and he's a high threat target. So say it's a tiny brain at the at the back of your mind there, Koya. Like he could be using fairly easily a frag grenade that basically couldn't miss, but he keeps using crack, and so far it's caused basically nothing but collateral damage. What was your doff there, Nazim? Uh, two. Only two. You toss your crack grenade with a fairly unerring aim, and with a slight gesture, the anomaly flicks it out of the air. It lands harmlessly in a different edge of the chamber. It stares down at you, eyes aflame, and yells, Cease your attacks, abomination! Sorry, I think you're echoing ever so slightly, here, Nicholas. My apologies. Ask him why. <laughs> Uh, we don't have to. He, uh, he's the enemy, we kill him. It's simple as that. Cease your attacks. Do you have any idea what you are doing? Can I alter him? <laughs> oh, go on. Uh, uh, can, I, can I shoot him? And then, like, people telling me what I can and can't do. Yeah, you... <laughs> I mean, sorry, what are you... Join the wrong organisation, then. <laughs> also that, yes. But what are you doing? Uh, what are you shooting him with, Ollie? Uh, well, I do have my Stasis Bolt Pistol, but am I within range? Am I within 40 metres of, uh, of, the, of the old dude? Absolutely. Uh, uh, within 10 metres? Is he 10 metres of like, straight oh, up? Oh, wait, no, sorry, it's a like, huge... Straight up. You're, yeah. you're like uh, 80 metres from him. He's, he's actually further th from you than I thought, really. In fact, let's, you know let's, have, a look, I'm going... let's have a double check on the chart. Uh, if yeah, you want to do trigonometry. Probably, eight meters, probably eight. Well, I, no, fuck trigonometry. I hate trigonometry so much. It's the one bit of algebra that's fucking shit. Uh, like it's the one bit of algebra that's actually useful. No, fuck you. Mm. Trigonometry sucks. Fuck you. It really does. It that really, really helps. helps. Trigonometry is for nerds and everyone who Trigonometry helps us work out how far young Nicholas has yeeted himself have when he throws <laughs> himself away from the Titan City. Have you ever considered dying in a fire? <laughs> Point being, Ollie, what are we doing? Uh, 
I'm gonna move if I work out a squared plus b squared equals c. Um, I'm gonna okay. move twenty meters closer, I suppose. I mean, the easiest way would Sorry, just be to break you, into a full run a to get to beneath react. the thing. If you want to react, because you said slightly first, you can react quicker. If you want to run 20 meters forward, that's fine, but I'm going to skip over to what your Nicholas was going to do, because he was a microsecond behind you. I mean, it's fine, it's only because I'm out of range to... I'll be at a minus 10, I think. I uh, remember, you can shoot up to double your range before you start taking yeah. penalties. 60 meters, so I can shoot 60 meters with my bolt pistol, and I'm 80 meters away from him. That's fair. Yeah, so Nick, you go first. Okay. Um... I'm just going to raise my Volkite uh, charger and just open fire. You open fire with your Volkite charger, and as the beams begin to hit the uh, Venusian anomaly, if you'd like to lose me, call it a D5's worth of ammunition. Five shots as you fire them off in rapid succession. They seem to evaporate, just disappearing seconds before they hit him, almost seeming to curl around a circular shield. The anomaly's eyes burn brighter, fire seeping from his corneas. Abomination. Do you understand where you are? Do you understand what you do? If you kill me, you doom us all. Nazim, you have a fraction of a second to uh, reply or otherwise interact before Maki reaches his firing position. Oh. Um, forbidden war. Uh, forbidden war? For forbidden law. Oh, no. uh, warp, uh, I guess. Um, do I, um, mm, 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 mm. Fraction of a second. Yeah, I know. Um, he's the enemy. Fuck him. Uh, from War Warp. Uh, anything uh, that would help dissipate that shield, like the servitors, the other things I'm seeing going around him. Is there any way to help improve our chances of taking you him have down? Absolutely no idea. No inklings or anything. Not even slightly. Okay. This is how we get. Other than yeah. vague fear and dread as you look at him, not so much as an inkling. You want chaos demons? This is how you get chaos demons. <laughs> oh, uh, what quick are aside. You talking about chaos demons. Uh, quick aside, I forgot we all have true grit, but I'm happy to keep the effect. <laughs> <laughs> the effect of your arm being blown off. Yes. But I wouldn't mind halving the critical damage I took, if you don't mind, gracious Jim. <laughs> what is, it, is it rounded up or rounded down? Uh, it's usually the way to fuck the player, so I'll assume. No, true grit is the true grit is round down. Is it? Yeah, because that's why true grit is so good. You know what? I trust you. You double check the fucking rule book, but I'm happy for true grit rounded down. That's what like three crit damage you knock on from there. Awesome. Nice. Um. Uh. Well, Volker doesn't do anything. Uh. Let's throw. Trying to go for like more of an AOE kind of frack. Uh. We'll go for a frack grenade. Oh, yeah. Another frack grenade. As you rush to secure a near, well, secure and presumably destroy a nearby void shield generator, a tiny voice at the back of your mind snips your attention ever so slightly towards your squad sergeant. Now he's using frag grenades? If he'd opened with them, so much of this could have been avoided. You could have ended this conflict by now. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Continue with the job. Why does also, he never seem to stand for professionalism? Everything's always how he wants to do it, never how it should be done. Basic also, training is there for a reason. Sorry, Green. Potential exciting news. Is this room metal? Uh, fair oh. amount of it. Oh, we have oh. mag boots, boys. All of us. You run up a wall. <laughs> <laughs> run up. Yes, yes. In an emergency, sure, you can run up walls. Can we hang from the? I class this is an emergency. This is an emergency. Creed needs to charge, and he can't jump that high. 
It generally, so generally, yes, you can hang from the ceiling. It depends on the gravity. Venus's gravity at this altitude is actually about average. Like one of the weird things about Venus is it has this weirdly specific habitable, uh, habitable, habitable, habitable. Zone, thank you, habitable zone in which life would be basically Earth-like, uh, and that is where the current floating hive city is presently orbited. But that is by no means all of Venus. So you wanted to throw a frag grenade, your Nicholas. Microseconds yeah. before Mackie arrives. All right, I'll take ballistic skill at a. Wait, 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 wait. It arrives. What do you mean arrives? At within range to fire his uh, Volkite incinerator. Uh, my bolt pistol. Bolt Sorry, pistol. bolt pistol. I stand corrected. Why you got to sound yeah. so suspicious, yeah. Nicholas? I'm here to work with you. Mm. Yeah. You're Nicholas. I'm your GM, and I love you. That's why he kills you first. Yeah. I've never killed him first. If anything, I killed Creed first. <laughs> you do consistently kill Creed first. And I actually. really, really oh, tried. Creed's KD, though, is awful. And I really tried... <laughs> He loses a character positive. every nine seconds. <laughs> and I really tried to kill Carl first, so I don't know what you're blaming me for. You roll in this, young Nicholas. Yes, what is it? I said ballistic skill at minus ten. Okay, cool. Fail again. Like, I assume you deducted a crack for last time, deduct a frag for this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you lob it at the guy, and it would have been a direct and easy shot. But again, he <laughs> gestures, and it flies away. Let me put this in terms that you can understand. If you kill me, then... Mackie arrives at his firing position. Mackie, what do? Uh, can I hear what he's saying? Absolutely. But so far, he's just been like chatting random bullshit with your sergeant as your sergeant repeatedly fails to do basically anything. I'm going to wait for him to finish those last couple of words he was going to say. Really? Um, I'm going to uh, wait for the theist to s finish speaking? Yeah. Really? As everything yeah. in your basic training pulls you against that, as every iota of your mind says to you, this is a trap. You yeah. have to wait for the theist to finish speaking. Yeah. You're just, you're just bluffing because you can't... You don't know what else you're going to say next, I think. <laughs> I'm not bluffing shit. I'm in character as the voice in the back of your head calling you a dirty fucking coward. But that's fine. You know, you do you. And if you want to be a little chicken shit, that's okay. You be that chicken sure. shit. Chicken shit to, to, to you learn. You don't need to justify yourself to me, Ollie. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. No, you're now really not. I know you're not. I'm being polite. Now, te now tell, me, tell me what he's going to say. The voice of the anomaly <laughs> continues to shriek at your sergeant. If you kill me, then the entire city is dust. Oh, my threat. He's threatening us and the city. A stray I'm bolt shell. Sergeant, I feel compelled to tell you that no shit. Mm. A stray bolt shell from somewhere in the That's squad. That's Nick speaking. Jesus from Christ. somewhere in the squad impacts upon the uh, exterior of the anomaly's evident energy shield. Cease. Do you not understand that we will all die? You, me. Your compatriots, our citizens, every single one. My I, life for the Emperor and for Terra! I turn towards uh, bro towards the brother sergeant, mm. cocking my head and looking at him, waiting for his order. And uh, uh, as you wait... I said to pressing fire! Open fire! And as and you I wait should... for that order to income, I think it sounds like Cusco had something he wanted to do. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just finishing up smoking, but I'm going to continue cover, uh, cover fire. Fair, your bolt shells continue before, to impact. Before this, uh, before this fresh round of shooting, can I say something into the box, sir? Uh, into the helmet box, having been checking on the progress of the squad's attack from whilst I'm doing the demolition work. Yeah, certainly. See, some of us have this new skill called command, so I would like to roll command and order people to take 
use coordinated fire to try and distract this. Clearly this thing is batting away at, is through some kind of arcane technology or strange, strange ways. It's batting away projectiles. Coordinate fire so it has to concentrate on more than one thing. Perhaps three things. Maybe four. Great idea, brother. I shall run up the walls I... and strike it down. That would also work. But yes, can I roll command for this? I start a, a count in my box. Ollie? Um, um, sorry, yeah. I start a count. A count, yes. I, I, I say like... Um, um, okay. I, in that I, case, the let's, let's do this in order then. Carl, what were you wanting to roll? Uh, I was just doing covering fire as a standard attack. Alright, standard attack. Uh, roll me again, please. Again? Well, you can't be rolling before I like double check what your roll is, man. Like, oh, that's that's been standard for years, and you know that, Dan. But I said I was covering fire. Yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, it's that. still like right. the same roll, same. ultimately. I, I, I'm, I'm super happy with that. I'd be really gutted if you got 100, and I usually love when playing at 100, but point being. Um, what's your DOS there? At uh, 1 degree. Okay, 1 degree. We'll give that as do- uh, as uh, bonus to the next person. Benji, roll me command at plus 10. Oh, no, sorry, it's two degrees. What am I talking about? Benji, roll me command at plus 20. 20. I'm going to fake that. Okay, so with my plus 20, so that's 40, 55, 75. So that is three degrees of success. <laughs> Okie dokie. Who is listening to Koya as the person in charge of the squad? Excluding Kuzco, who is currently laying down covering fire. Not I, for I am charging regardless. <laughs> uh, I'm in charge of the squad, so I'd take it on as a suggestion. So you're deliberately ignoring is what I'm hearing there. Um, I, I agree, it's a good idea. Sorry, it's, it's uh... a binary choice. Are you listening to Koya or are you not listening to Koya? As far as following orders, not listening. Okay, so not listening to Koya. And then let's check in with Mackie, listening to Koya. Well, it doesn't matter if Mackie's listening to me. I needed at least three people to do it. <laughs> to really make the entire effective. Still. <laughs> you can't have one person coordinate your fire. I'm going to so I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to the fact that coordinated fire on a single spot sounds good. So I message as such into the box. And I say, on my mark... You can do a countdown. I don't think that's even slightly on your mark. That was 100% on Koya's mark. Well, well no, I'm just I'm saying like the words like fire on my mark. Then. Yeah, but you I'm... can't say fire on your mark when it's clearly not on your mark. Well, uh, uh, to be fair, I didn't give a mark, mostly because I'm not yeah. directly looking at it the whole time. I'm doing demolitions off the yeah. side. So I, I'm the one who has to... Pro- someone has to provide a mark, and no one's providing sorry. a mark. Yet. Sorry. As much as this is an Koya order, roll... I was mostly giving direction. Koya rolled command... And on my mark is the direction involved in that. I didn't no. take it that way. Koya's one was just the suggestion. That was what he was rolling. Yeah, he was just giving a suggestion. That was all. Yeah, he wasn't saying on my mark. He didn't say on my mark at all, no. On my mark is commanding people. It, it is, yes. I'm saying more in this case that the use of command was to get people to listen to me. Yeah. That's- Rather than charm, this is a... Ta- this is a professional yeah, soldiering so this is situation. coordinating so. people who are willing to go along with you. As Can we just... Random, I just accept no one's listening to me. As, uh, yeah, as random but not in charge. Well, so what I'm saying here is it's absolutely fine for your command to have worked for the people who are willing to go along with you, which sounds like it was Mackie, apart from the fact that Mackie seems to want to be in command himself. Uh, and, and you can either go along with someone else's command, or you can attempt to make it your own. Uh, and in that case, you can't benefit from his command role. It's one of the two. Going with Koya, then, obviously. Okay, that's fine. I'm not he saying roll, you can't roll Give him bonuses, the... of course he'll go with oh, that. No, he doesn't need to roll. You already, you already successfully coordinated that. Like, if Mackie is going with you, you passed your command by, what was your DOS? Three. Three. You already passed by three, so Mackie's coordinated with you. You're fine. But this is what I'm saying, is, is Mackie can't coordinate himself after you've already coordinated. There is a level involved. And then on the other side of things, Nazim's side of the squad, all two of you, what are you doing? Running up wall. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I like to feel like we're going parallel, so he's on one wall, I'm on the other wall, 
We both have chainsaws out. We're both war running up the walls. Okay, so just just let's do a speedy three hundred meters by three to four hundred meters. So you are aware that this is a colossal building. That's fine. You can be both be running up the walls. It's gonna take a while. How long a while? How tall? Are there not like supports like going around like the middle of the dome sort of thing or anything like that? No, not even slightly. It's a colossal you you're looking at a like uh, a slightly pimplier millennium dome situation. My, my, my run's thirty. Give it to me straight, Doc. Alright, let's take a let's take a look, shall we? What do you what, do we have a run characteristic? In th- in three hundred in in a hundred seconds, you would run three hundred meters. This is a climb, right? Even running up, I would say this is probably a fair use of the climb skill. I will take climb over athletics at a minus twenty to do this at speed. Given that three hundred meters is achievable in about shh, don't matter, forty don't seconds. Matter. Forty matter. second for you. Yeah, forty seconds what, is sorry? like ten rounds. Uh, ten rounds, four rounds. Climb right, over what, sir? Seconds, it's ten rounds. Yeah. And he's a space marine. <laughs> uh, what did he say? Uh, Forty second. Uh, at a climb over athletics at a minus twenty. Right. What, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, that's, that's not a characteristic. <laughs> climb is a skill. Yes, yes uh, and so uh, is athletics, and it's not a skill we have. Sorry, what am I talking about? Climb over agility. <laughs> at, uh, in my climb defense, over in okay. my defense, it's a weekday, and I've been drinking. It's climb over agility <laughs> at a minus twenty. Okay. <laughs> it's not a skill we have. <laughs> you keep I'm fight it. I want to pass. Oh, uh, we have. A, uh, it's trained. Climb is trained. So you have a plus ten to it na- naturally. Sorry, uh, plus ten. Oh, I think I'll still be off by five. Mm-hmm. It's a plus ten. What's this? Why isn't the Zoom sheet just open for me? Uh, Get out! I, I clicked the wrong button. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think you do have a plus 10 to it. I think you just don't have... I think it's, have it's, it's, got, yes. it's got uh, an extra tick in it, isn't it? If it's oh, trained, no. then you have a plus 10. If it's basic, then you have a plus 0. Yeah, climb is yeah, trained. Train. Yeah, then that is a plus 10, sorry. Yeah, it's plus 10, yeah. Yeah, I still narrowly fail. Uh, yeah, Nicholas? Yarp. I, I got that. Yeah, miraculously, for some reason, the one of the two of you who can fucking see and is quite close to a wall as he just came in through an entrance. <laughs> Three degrees of success. <laughs> makes pretty good time and is almost at the top of the chamber by the same point that, you know, Quattlemox has just about bumpingly reached the other side of the chamber in order to begin running up that. <laughs> <sighs> In which time, Koya and Mackie have both started laying down suppressing fire. Well, sorry, no, not even that, uh, because Kuzco is laying down suppressing fire, Koya is laying down decent amounts of bolt of fire, and Mackie is likewise, albeit from close. Are you sure I was, uh, as said, suppre- uh, breaking void shield generators yeah. and not shooting people? Yeah, he's off sabotaging and breaking shields. I thought that was your initial thing. I didn't think you... I like, was, but I didn't it. think I'd finished. He hasn't no, rolled not even, yet. Not even slightly. Like, it'll take no, so part. I'm still going to be doing that. There's void shields to break. That's the mission. Okay, so you're just leaving. That's fair. In that case, I will take... Let's take a speedy look at your sheet, shall we? Can we see how you're doing on that one? How many void shield generators in here are there? Uh, as I said, dozens. Okay. I will take uh, tech use at a plus 10. I'm not trying to be particularly, you know... No, no, you're not. You're, you're being extremely indiscriminating here. You're, you're just whatever's closest and technology is looking. Oh, we'll give you that in a second. Mushroom, mushroom. Oh. Oh, that's a pass of... Two degrees. A void generator. Oh, ooh, it's a void generator. Two degrees. By the time that Mackie starts opening fire to your rear, 
You have already destroyed two void shield generators. However, there are just so many more, like I say, several dozen, lining the walls of the room, lining and dispersed across its floor. It is a ludicrously heavily defended anomalous power plant, albeit one in which you can see extremely little in the way of power generation paraphernalia. Your uncoordinated attack means that Mackie is basically laying down uh, fire, which is fairly easily deflected. Likewise, Kuzco is able to put up covering fire, but nothing that... God damn it, Carl. Nothing that isn't fairly easily ignored or deflected past the initial couple of volleys. And Nazim, as he charges up the wall and towards the anomaly, is relatively easily gripped and hurtled down towards the floor with a single movement of an emphatically outraised arm. Bastard. I mean, what is a sail, really, if not for tossing things around the place? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can't assail me. Assail something into me. You no, he can assail you. You can yourself all the way over my campaign. You can definitely... Yeah, yeah can myself definitely assail- is fine. You no, can't... you can definitely assail people. No, I have tried that so many times, and every time I get shut down, like, no, you can't throw the purse. No, 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 that's totally fair. You can't assail people. He can. Also, I've played a psycho that can totally assail people. When have you played a psycho that can assail people? When I had star rating of five, when I was playing uh, fucking the guy in Rogue Trader. I was. I don't remember this. You let me pick up the lons. Uh, admittedly, that like Hobbit people, but like still, I they, pick, they were I fucking kobolds. <laughs> yeah, I could pick. You let me pick two of them up at one point and throw them. All right, fair. I, I don't disbelieve you. I'm just, I'm just disdainful of past you and his poor life decisions. You know, generally. The anomaly in the centre of the room shrieks at you as uh, all of you from all directions are oncoming. Do you fools not understand? If you kill me, he seems to duck, his power ebbing. We'll all die. My civilization at an end. What do you want from us? He shrieks at your sergeant. Compliance. Sergeant Nazim? There's nothing... That, that's just perfect. I just... just That. <laughs> Racking your shit. I just start opening fire again. Into it's the been... Vox, I would like to make a comment. Brothers, Brother Kuzco is gifted with words and the ways to maintain friendships with, soon, with soon-to-be with uh, soon ex-enemies. Perhaps he could be of use in talking this person down. Racking your bolt gun... It becomes extremely clear that the anomaly in the centre of the room is running out of juice. Though he has shrugged off most of your attacks so far, he's clearly sagging. It doesn't seem like... He flags out of the seat he was laxly lazed into and begins shrinking, slowly slowly gravitated towards the floor of the room, his anomalous energy just barely keeping him afloat with every bolt shell laid his way. What do? The Cusco. I'm boxing in. Cover and fire! You know what? I'll Maybe take, I'll take concentrate fire! I will take an agility test from everyone, please. At a plus zero. Let's see who Is that goes. Including me or everyone who wants to do something will do an agility <laughs> test in and DOS in order. I'm mostly just trying to box people so that Kuzco can use his uh, freaking philosophy to espouse the ideals of the Great Crusade. Up to and including that. Okay. Yeah. Is that just flat agility? No. Yeah. Uh, in the <laughs> fail by literally one point, <laughs> so one degree of failure. Anyone else? No? Okay, cool. Uh, Nazim and Maki, which of you two has the higher agility? Uh, 38. Maki? Olivia? Um, what am I going to do? He's talking... He's, Sorry, he's Olivia. Uh, agility. 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 Oh, 50, 50. 50. 50, yeah, you go first. Maki, time seems to slow for a bare moment. You move 
just a fraction of a second ahead of everyone else, but that seems, for all intents and purposes, like an elongated infinity. What do? Uh, so the man has been chatting shit up there, and he's like, going to kill you, and Benji is in favour of talking to him? Uh, no, I'm in favour of uh, Brother Kuzco espousing the ideals of our great crusade and the wonder of the emperor of mankind, <laughs> perfect be he. <coughs> in the interest yeah, of even fairness, if this guy get, even if the guy just gets does just get shot, taking some time to lay a verbal smackdown in the name of the emperor is kind of what we're for. In the interest and of also fairness, a he also has not said I'm going to kill you. Like yeah, even I'm once. kind of on um, yeah. I'm going to hold my turn until uh, Cusco. Okay, you're going to cow it out. That's fine. Uh, Cusco up next. So oh, not Cusco so next. Uh, yeah, you're one hundred percent last. What was your doth there, Carl? Three, three, three doth. Yeah. In that case, next up is uh, is uh, Nazim, Sergeant Nazim, as your squad mate. Koi, uh, not Koya. Sorry, Mackie. For a second, looked like he was going to leap into action ahead of you, and then just seemed to freeze up. Cowardice overtaking him. Inaction. Inconsideration. <sighs> failure in the line of duty. What generation? I'm just letting them go first. That's Sorry, all. no, this isn't this isn't Cusco. This is uh, oh, right. Mackie. Uh, seeing seeing it, uh, his uh, shields waver and so forth, and he's weakening. I increase my firepower. Uh, I'd like to just, like semi auto just at him as with my Volkite charger. As so many of these war witches before. He seems impervious. Up until the moment that you catch him when he's off guard or unable to maintain his techno-heretical powers, and then, in a single spray of gore, the anomaly's chest detonates. And just as the very moment where Koya was about to begin espousing the ideals of the Great Crusade, about to try and Talk the anomaly low. Bring him low in the eyes of the Emperor. He crashes to the floor, screaming and bloody, looking down at his chest and then horrified up at you, making direct, direct eye contact with you, Nazim. <coughs> Do you have any idea what you've done? Uh, are the shields going down? His shields are gone, and at the exact second that he said, done, the light seems to fade from his eyes, and he dies. Clap. What do? I would like to retort. Ah! He thought he was all that. We've got brother, um... Ah, oh, damn it. Chris, you're Qualmox, yeah? Oh, yeah, we've got Brother Quilmox here, but that guy was really armless. <laughs> I'm so mad at you. <laughs> Quilmox, having just enough time to stop walking up the wall on the other side of the chamber, turn around and presumably strike a dramatic pose. Uh, I look, look up. Uh, the, the, the large shield that we came here to take down, is it, is it down yet? Or? No, there's dozens and dozens of these void shields all over the chamber. Oh, okay, I see. But we were taking on this specific zone and Smashing. whatever was contained within. It's, it's done, yeah? It's, our, our zone is good. How do you mean? Uh, the shield that was... You said like he was powering the shield, or helping power the shield. Nope. I said he had dozens and dozens of void shields protecting the building in which he was and that he himself had some kind of personal shield, which ricocheted off the first few attacks he made, and then promptly collapsed, allowing you to end him almost immediately. Didn't he have a beam of light coming out of him? I thought, mm -hmm. how'd you say that? Nope. Yeah, I, I, I was under the impression he was... Uh, he was on, like, a chandelier sort of get -up. Yeah, he like, was yeah. sat on a big chandelier seat, and his eyes were leaking fire. He did not have a beam of light coming out of him. Okay. Sorry, I was under the impression he was helping maintain the large shield over the uh, over the area. As in, the one we're here to shut down. Potentially. And as you sort of eye other members of your squad, wondering what happened to the shield protecting the place, 
You feel a sudden lurching sensation under your feet. I mag boot onto the wall. <laughs> Almost all of you, in fact, instinctively mag boot onto something. You're all extremely, if you will recall, I believe your legion's mutation is an over, uh, an overactive lineman's ear, meaning that you are physically incapable of being disorientated unless you stay on a stable planetoid for too long, in which case it overcompensates and starts to get freaked out. This is kind of your Lyman's Ears comfort zone, as it senses a sudden, interminable, and immediately obvious, falling, sinking sensation in the least metaphorical way possible. Oh no. Oh, I would no, hazard no. a guess that the station has begun planet fall. In which case, can I immediately start to vox uh, Captain uh, Hukatan? No. Yakutau. Yakutau. Captain Captain. Yakutau. Captain Yakutau, this is Brother Koya uh, reporting in. We have dealt with the threat inside Zone J. However, as we've done so, the uh, the city appears to be destabilizing, making our way to primary LZ for extraction. I would also like to I would also like to message the uh, uh, our auxiliaries that we came here with. The vox back from Captain Yatakao is uh, slightly garbled, but sounds at least vaguely positive in tone, even if you can't make out exactly what's being said. The voice back from your attached Imperial Army Regiment, the 31st Australians, is somewhat more mixed. Limited. <laughs> Casualty. <laughs> What do? I was going to say that was an excellent breaking up radio impression. Ten out of which ten. Case, in which case, I would mm. like to uh, message them uh, saying uh, casualties are to be disregarded. Withdraw with all speed. And uh, Sergeant Nazim, what do? Um... Dealt with the stuff. It feels like the building's about to fall, doesn't it? Which has all the shields in. This so. is more than the building falling. This your is the Lyman's city ear gives you, uh, per your Legion's okay. incomparable gene seed floor, gives you a complete and total understanding of your velocity under any given circumstances. Nice. You are currently falling down. Nice. The city started, per your briefing, that you would remember. 35 kilometers above the surface of Venus. You have, I mean, with every given falling kilometer, uh, the atmosphere will become increasingly toxic, and obviously when you hit the ground, it will become simply fatal. And also you'll die from impact. Uh, you need to get <laughs> to somewhere... Indeed. We need to return to the primary LZ and board a Stormbird and get the fuck off this planet. I, I, I concur. I completely agree. <laughs> You uh, need to board a Stormbird, do you? Uh, uh, I'll just briefly point out a thing that will flash through all of your minds. Your Stormbird crashed, if you'll recall, and you are... I did, I did say a Stormbird. And you are... Uh, what are we at? More than half a kilometer ahead of the rest of the invading forces, assuming that their updated position is reasonably correct. So you're way in advance of everyone else. You have 35 kilometers before you impact the surface of Venus, and you need to be going faster than that in order to get off planet. Um, in which case, can we consult the map on our heads-up display? Certainly. What do you want to know? Was there, as I suspect there might have been, some kind of civilian's, civilian port with either in atmosphere or sublight vessels. Certainly, that would be the Phasma spaceport due east of here. Which is further away than the landing uh, zone. Is it? I'm not quite sure. A, yes, as you said, we've lost our Stormbird. And B, I don't know if it is further away. Significantly, of... it is definitely further away. Uh, in yeah. fact, arguably even twice as far. The slight difference being that the Phasma spaceport almost certainly has peop uh, has um, craft that could get you off-world. Whereas if you get back to landing zone Mirandus, which is only half distance, the chances that there's going to still be craft left are significantly less. 
also, I want to point this out. Be, you know, the of the cloud I would, I would point this out as well. But there's going to be heavy... Res given that the other legions have not made it past this point, as far as we know, there's still going to be heavy heavy resistance coming down this conveyor strut, this conveyor strut, and throughout here. There's going to be a line we'd have to break through to get past them. However, if we stay behind the line and merely move laterally into the spaceport, I think the we should be able to cut through the chaos. Because our allies are pushed to the landing zone as well, our chances of, of getting commandeering one of theirs, or getting on board one of theirs, is unlikely, so spaceport is still the best, better option for mm -hmm. multiple reasons. Hmm. By the time we get there, our allies might have met there as well. At least some of yeah, them. and they were pushing through to there as well, so... Um, I moved to the door. That's, yeah, we need to move now. Yeah, double time, Phasma, spaceport. Um, <laughs> just beeline it. We are running through walls. Uh, in which case, I would like to also get on the Vox... Uh, I would like to get on the Vox again. To any and all... Imperial aligned units uh, that are past the past the main line and unable to make their way to uh, space landing zone Mirandus at any point. We are making for uh, the Phasma spaceport. Uh, army units are to re army and other Imperial units are to regroup on us, and we will commandeer a vessel to get off the. Uh, the the Vox seems a tad jammed up. It's almost like thousands of Marines simultaneously realized they had just started plummeting downwards. <laughs> um, it's fine, I, I'll put my message out there, and doing, I will keep broadcasting it every two minutes or so. Definitely doing your best. Um, people with the highest strength. I'm, I'm assuming Clatamox has a ridiculous strength score. Uh, it's 50. Yeah. I'm, I'm 50 as well. Uh, I'd like you two to lead the charge through the buildings. Oh, I'll, I'll have my hand just on your shoulder. In. Just to double check in, Michael Marks, how many fatigue yeah. points do you have? Oh, like seven or eight. Yeah, so do remember all of your strength <laughs> stat uh, skills are at like 50% uh, malice as a result. Oh, so Bro prove it less. Brother, brother Sergeant, we need not we need not have subtlety or, or sneaking here. We, need, we merely need to head down the uh, fairways. Uh, yes, but also, if you see there's a building here, rather than walking around it, we can just plow through it. Brother, I do not think that building covers the entire way. Uh, multiple buildings, and having to, like, walk around corners and so forth? No, just I, go through I, the building. I say to the brothers, there is, does appear to be a route here. We go through, and we go through this little passageway here. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, the and then... Five of yeah. you charge out through the passageway that brought you into the anti-building adjacent to the initial chamber, and thence through a series of almost paper-thin walls out to the conveyor way beyond, which seems almost log-jammed with traffic. It's been barely a few minutes, if that even, honestly, as the entire floating hive begins to plummet towards the surface of Venus and its inevitable doom. The conveyor way is filled with chaos, troops bound for the front, only just beginning to realise, just starting to grok. Any other hives on Venus, or is this the only one? This is the singular floating hive that comprises all of the Venusian civilization. Oh, I think you're, the, uh... you're about to find there's going to be no hives on Venus. <laughs> <laughs> you may have just killed the world. And <laughs> whose fault <laughs> is that? I fight the shot, so I guess it's my fault. And the guys who warned us, and it was all on tape as well. All levels of casualties accepted. The Emperor himself yeah. Yeah. did permit all levels of casualties <laughs> if they were necessary. I feel like this is uh, not unnecessary casualties. Casualties we didn't necessarily account for, but we're fine to have. Yeah, like, I'm, like, like what, what, what sane person would think, that man's holding up the city with his mind... What sane person would even stop to ask? What sane person would build a city that could only be held up by one man's mind? <laughs> exactly. Indeed, it's almost like there were multiple empty seats and various other anomalies out defending the city from a wide-scale invasion. Yes, what well, we, we were the invaders, would, and they're defending against yes, us. But what kind of person wouldn't just, you know, create a technological <laughs> way of keeping the city afloat, as opposed oh, to certainly, relying on that? Exactly. Something that requires basic maintenance by a few people. 
<laughs> Killing one person shouldn't cause the entire thing to collapse. No, no ideally let's not. Let's keep running. Let's keep, <laughs> let's keep running. Let's keep running. Yeah. But I mean, what kind of madman would kill millions to tens of millions to potentially hundreds of millions, all for the sake of failing to do basic pre-battle <laughs> research, or even mid-battle <laughs> research? <laughs> Who would, and with that, you of, emerge what kind onto of the conveyor doesn't way. have interns. And with that, you emerge onto the conveyor way. I would like to walk through this wall right here. So you're going to charge across the conveyor way. It is a bit log jam, so you're not at risk of getting hit. However, it is basically filled with hostile soldiers, all of whom are pissed off and know exactly what the enemy looks like. Uh, are, there no are there any? Are there any? So I'll bring out the Volkite incinerator, but first I'd like to throw a car in the general direction, if possible. Strength at minus 20. <laughs> I'd like to pick up a car and use it as shield. Are there any vehicles that might uh, that look like they might be able to take space marines? No. <laughs> well, no, that's incorrect. There's plenty of vehicles that look like they might be able to. You are dealing with a good old-fashioned traffic jam. And that was two degrees of failure. You attempt to lift a nearby vehicle, only to find that your ability to, like, really heft the weight is somewhat put off by the people with las guns inside the vehicle, firing them repeatedly at your face, which is extremely distracting and incredibly painful. Brothers, <laughs> their weapons cannot really harm us. Let us just run past them. Yeah, I, I guess I, start, I bring out the Volcanes generator and I just start running. Okay, yeah. I will take a... Dodge over. Why are we dodging? They've got las guns. Because there's hundreds to thousands of them. Uh, yeah, and they won't all be shooting at us. No, they will all be shooting at you. Two to three were shooting at Ollie. Yeah. You're running um, into a packed motorway filled with pissed off soldiers who are just yeah, coming to the realization. We we who are like just them. coming to the realization that they're all about to die, and you are the only possible symbol of hatred and rage that they will get to unleash their pissed offness on shortly before they die. I will take dodge over, I think probably perception here, to really like roadie run your way through. Unless you want to be ballsy and try agility in which case we'll whack on an additional minus 10. Uh, that's a plus we have, we have it trained, so that's a plus 10 right? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, if it's perception is it uh, visual based? Because then we have uh, enhanced senses, so we get a plus 10 to that as well. <laughs> you know what, I think that applies here, sure. Cool. So uh, I automatically 20. fail any vision based tests. <laughs> You've got your hand on me, remember? Uh, it, it's uh, hearing and sight in our in in yeah, enhanced sight, well. sight does not apply in this circumstance, unfortunately. So in that case, it sounds like Creed is just... Sorry, it sounds like uh, Coatlemox is just fucking legging it across as fast <laughs> as he can. So for Coatlemox, then, it is a... Uh, what was that? What did we say? It was a dodge over... <laughs> well, fuck me! Dodge Jesus over Christ. athletic... Uh, dodge over athletics. Dodge over dexterity... Agility? Agility, I, uh, thank you. Dodge over agility at minus 10 for Creed, please. I have like, uh, six, six degrees of success there. You I'm going to fade that. Uh, put your DOS or DOF in the, in the role. Really? Yeah, um, I've got the same role either way, uh, but I'm going to say agility just for flavor. Was that a perception as well? That might be one of the first. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, you're going to fade that. Yeah, it was uh, dodge over perception by default. Right. And a plus uh, seven. Four, four degrees of success for me, then. That's one, of the, that's one of the first ones I rolled in what feels like a year. <laughs> Did you get a one? I yes, rolled a one, yeah. I re-rolled into a one. <laughs> Jesus Christ, so you did. I ballet over those fucks. <laughs> Alright, so everyone who isn't Koya or Maki post your dos slash doth. And I help. Battle marks in any way because obviously leaving him just eyeless to run past this seems kind of hard. I thought he had his hand on me. That was the original plan. Usually, I would probably be skeptical and or just say no. However, to be strictly fair here, y'all did say that he had his hand on Mackie previously, and Mackie did get a one. How it was. You son of a bitch. <laughs> the Emperor protects, brothers. <sighs> the Imperial Truth protects. 
<laughs> the Emperor Protects is still a perfectly reliable thing at that. <laughs> All right, not quite a theist, but everyone knows it's a little bit of a basic bit to say. <laughs> the emperor. One of the emperor's favorite emperor... phrases at the moment is "the emperor beloved by all." There's a fine line, but there is a line. Yeah, it's because he doesn't realize I mean, it's not very catchy, though. You know, is he widely known to like be a fucking wizard, or do we, <laughs> do we not know? So, that? psychers in the Great Crusade are not officially repressed. They do make a point of them. However, we have inexplicably made it clear that at this stage of the Great Crusade, psychers are clearly not known, which kind of makes sense, right? Like, you don't have a need for astropaths yet, for instance, so it's not been brought up. So you haven't had the basic, uh, like, information on that, which means that the knowledge that the Emperor is a space wizard is also, at this moment in time, probably repressed. It'll come out All in right. the next couple of years at worst, but currently, right now, he's just some regular guy, probably, who happens to be really awesome. Uh, he, he happens to be, he's just a regular guy who happens to be 20 foot tall and shines like yeah. he's made of gold. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you've also only ever seen him from, like, basic training really far away. So how big was he? Or was he just far away? Did he, did he look like a normal person from the perspective of the right height? Well, he, he, he looks he different to everybody else, everybody's, <laughs> but given at that point, if, uh, beginning of basic, we would have still been general humans, he probably would have looked like the Emperor, yeah. which means he's a 20-foot-tall superhuman who looks like he's made of gold. Exactly. Uh, his, his appearance is to a degree mimetic, and you were at the time basically human and mostly children, probably. So... You, you may be thinking in retrospect that your um, uh, remembrance of him, your remembrance of him, your memory of him is inaccurate. It's not, but it's, <laughs> that's what you're thinking it is. Uh, sure. So you don't think he's a 20 foot tall space wizard. You just remember him as 20 foot tall and basically a space wizard. You're in for a shocking reminder in the next couple of years when you go, holy shit, he was a space wizard the whole time. Also, space wizards exist. Uh, also, he's 20 foot tall and made of gold. Holy yeah, crap. also, he's 20 foot tall and made of gold. Like, what the fuck? I thought 12 year old me was just a dumbass. The point being, Mackie charges across the road, one arm gripping the back of Coatlemox's head as he zigzags through assorted, packed, military-grade troop transports filled with pissed-off troopers just processing the fact that not only are they dead, but their entire civilization is dead. People are spontaneously shooting themselves in the head as you run past, as you roadie run your way to the other side of the conveyor way. Many more of them shrieking in rage and hatred and anger as they realize exactly what is happening to them, and even more so as the caustic lower levels of the Venusian atmosphere begin to eat and eat and seep away at their lungs, wrenching the skin from their faces, and I do mean very visually and deliberately wrenching. Coatlemox, sorry. I was going to say, I guess it's good that Coatlemox doesn't have any more skin left to lose. Extremely good. Yeah. And that you're gripping the outside of his helmet. Uh, his environmental suit is in no way environmental anymore. It is not sealed, <laughs> even slightly. Fortunately, as his skin ignited, he's in way too much just general ambient pain and or way too much general ambient pain relief to really notice when the atmosphere starts seeping into his suit and slowly... So he probably lost a good deal of his nerve endings. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, what he feels is already agony. There's only so much that the acidic, toxic, caustic air can do to him. And shortly behind you, also Rhodey running his way to victory, a determined and practiced, some might say professional, scout. <coughs> <coughs> Koya, bar amazing fluke, would have been the first across the conveyor way. Sadly, that is barring amazing fluke, and with amazing fluke in existence, he is the third across the conveyor way after the blind lad and, <laughs> surprisingly, Mackie. The heavy weapons expert. The heavy weapons expert carrying his uh, Volkite incinerator, doggy, uh, dogging? dodging, ducking, and weaving his way. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm the ones that constantly making the sexual innuendo. <laughs> Following God. quite a ways after them, Laz Shots... Imagine if, imagine if that was thumped on a windscreen. Oh, Laz, Shots, Laz Shots already beginning to trace him, blasting <laughs> bits of vehicle and chunks of unfortunate 
local militiamen comes Cusco with his one dos. And then somewhat more unfortunately, with one doff, Nazim, who would not be in nearly so bad a situation, but unfortunately, Coatlmox the Eyeless, per his updated character description, <laughs> did get, get out of jail freed by Mackie and his one. I'm um, about to get hurt. Yes, you are. Uh, if you'd like to take 5d10 energy damage to the body, pen zero, please. As dozens, nay, hundreds of last shots begin rigging out all around you. Uh, I think I'm still going to go okay. How many wounds you got? Uh, I have... Uh, I'm on, I was on nines, add... Ooh, close. Uh, Just to the body, right? Uh, yeah, eight, so soak 18, 18 off of that, 20, 12, 12, oh, that's uh, 9, that's bang on, oh, that's bang on 21. Crit damage, you remember you have true bang on my wounds. Is that crit then, or is it over? If you're down to bang damage. on your wounds, that's zero wounds, that's not crit damage. No, yeah, so I'm just okay. Any more would be crit damage. Dozens, nay, hundreds of last shots ring out all around you. Vehicles go up in flame as volleys of last fire target them. People see the hated <sighs> mustard yellow and pastel pink livery of your chapter. And knowing it's obvious and extremely signature, loathsome color scheme, they simply let out. Yes, not happening. They simply let out with the fervent last fire blasting each other apart in their urgent desire to get at least some kind of cathartic vengeance. More than a few shots impact you, scorching the paint from your armor, leaving you a dull and ultimately significantly more tasteful grey. I feel like it doesn't like our color scheme. I don't know what makes me think that. And that right. You reach the other side of the conveyor way and just about manage to throw yourself into a ditch in which you find the rest of your squad, none of whom are even slightly... Well, sorry, most of whom are not more than slightly scorched, whereas you are actively smoking the outer layers of your ceramite armor beginning to cool... As they I ran into the shots that missed them. As <laughs> they ran past their shots, I walked into the shots. Yeah, quite well, a bit. Sergeant, are you hurt in any way? <laughs> like, not gonna lie, that, that was actively... You would have taken maybe about 3d10, and Creed would have got a 5d10. Creed didn't get a 5d10. Ollie used his 1 <laughs> to save him, even on his 5 off. I usually... We did get a 1. If you got a 2, we wouldn't have allowed it. Yeah. Uh, um, in response, um, uh, I am fairly badly wounded, but we should try to push on. Brother Sergeant, my gratitude for taking the rear and uh, defending the guard. Uh, I would like to try re revoxing any uh, and all Imperial units to move with us to the spaceport to commandeer vehicles in order to make planet escape. <laughs> Received. <laughs> Did that sound like the right voice to you? Well, I, I am boxing Imperial units. I don't think they're on our Vox uh, network. We hope. But I guess I, I guess we got a response. Let's keep pushing forwards. We go through the wall, I suppose. You should put moving to the other side. So let me just double check what Zone and Say have to offer. Let's see what they say have to about that. Uh. You are, dying, are, there, are there any uh, space marines around that we can see, or any any other Imperials that yeah. we can see around us? Other members of your squad. Uh, um, I like I how like like, I like how only one ma major, like you know, uh, was it not chapter, um, not squad, levels between managed to get out of the land. Huh? Uh, company. Yeah, I like how one company managed to get out of the landing zone. Every Wait. single other company is still partially in there. 
We're um, not a company, we're a squad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, squad. Let's turn to, uh, once we've got some cover and some, a little bit of distance between uh, us uh, and the thousand las guns, uh, if uh, I might ask Kuzo if he's got anything that could quickly help. Indeed, Brother Sergeant. However, I believe it would be more appropriate to wait until we arrive at our uh, evacuation location. Very well. I'm just thinking of ambushes and other things that could do one damage to me on the way. It's fine, Brother Sergeant. We are the Emperor's chosen. None may stop us. We'll be fine, Brother. It is but a scratch. (laughs) (laughs) I look at you as like... Are you just looking in a completely wrong way? Let's go! As he says, as he says, tis but a scratch, the machine spirit within your helmet plays up his vitals. You read exactly how damaged Quattlemox is. At about the exact moment, he says, scratch. Yes, but I, I, I hear what he says. I see what the machines are telling me and say... That's right. My brother is right. I, I, I like clasp his shoulder. I was like, you're right, brother. Forwards to the spaceport. Brother Sergeant, I would not clasp Coatlemox so tightly. <laughs> Who are you? Coatlemox's Coatlemox's his remaining... spirit keeps him standing. Coatlemox's <laughs> we should remaining learn from him. shoulder seems to quiver, almost as though it's on the very cusp of disintegrating. <laughs> As I hear it, will not allow it. As I, as I hear continue. the phrase, as I hear the phrase, his spirit keeps him standing. Uh, Mackie privately thinks, "So do a fuck ton of painkillers." <laughs> <laughs> how, how many doses of painkillers do you have left, Creed? Um, I haven't taken since the combat, but I think I had three. You took another one just after, didn't you? Um. Yeah, there was the second eight round use like, one that you got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone tell me what we start with. I've only six. Done six, six, about six. Yeah, I probably have two left. <laughs> I, I, don't we have more? Then we all have some, though. So we could just give him some of ours. They're built I, into. I, your, yeah, they're built into your suit. So you probably can drain them with significant skill, but it's not a quick process. You'd have to like. Mm, yeah. It'd be like yeah, you can drain them with enough skill, all right. Exactly. No, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be like transferring power, you know? Like, you can probably do it, but you'd need to spend a little bit of time farting around. Okay, it's fine. Oh, well, manage. So long as they last until they get to the spaceport. Yeah, I mean, you know, what what kind of difficulty are you likely to encounter between here and there? Um, mm. So, as mentioned, Zone C consists largely of industrial infrastructure, mostly, per your mission briefing, supporting the Phasma spaceport. Nazim, Sergeant Nazim, you have punched through into a a little ditch right next to a very large industrial sector, mostly consisting of warehouse after warehouse after warehouse, and an interlinked series of minor alleyways, absolutely perfect for ambushes. The enemy no longer has anything whatsoever to lose. You have doomed their civilization. Mm-hmm. And um, it is extremely, extremely obvious to many of them that that's exactly what's happened. What do? Uh, as I said, I'd like to beeline it to the spaceport through the walls. Screw the alleyways, we're just going through the buildings. Okay. Who's taking point in that case? Uh, I believe uh, that Brother... Uh, Mackie has the best chance of getting through the walls right now. Uh, if he'd like to <laughs> lead <laughs> as your vision ping pongs, Mackie, Coatlemox, Mackie, Coatlemox, arguably Coatlemox, but he does look extremely fragile. You realize that all of your visual malices of him, uh, your visual display of his vitals are in, in the negative. Yes, <laughs> definitely Mackie. He's also the demolition expert, so I'm assuming he can find the best spot in the walls to run through. I, I'm guessing there's a lot of question marks on the tactical assessment of your various <laughs> squad mates right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> through the walls. I, I, they won't I, expect it. I, I mean, who's <laughs> going to one who likes going through walls the most? But I guess we are trying for expedience right now. Yes. Um, I, 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 but, anyway. Okay, sure. Um, yes, I will start running through walls like the motherfucker I am. 
Okay, I will take navigate surface over strength at a plus zero, please. I have navigate surface. I think you come. Can I to... assist him by getting behind him and sort of doing that? You know, yeah, like, can we like conga I, line um, training? Conga, conga line push. Yeah. I've asked him to do this. I will allow up to two of you who are trained to navigate surface to conga line him on this. Um, can I be uh, sandwiched no. in the middle just for easy guidance? Well, we were going to put you at the yeah. back. It does sound. I, I, yeah, I think to be fair, it sounds like you probably. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Oh, actually, I do only have one arm as well. So who who's on babysitting, uh, Mackie? Uh, I suppose I probably should. Oh, wait, no, that's not. If, you're, like if you're on baby setting, then you can't support, is what we'll say. Uh, the medic should probably babysit, but You've he does love running through walls. I shall, baby, I shall babysit, I, then Azim and uh, Kuzco can help. Yeah. Um, pri- pr- prior to this, uh, I, can I command? Because I'm telling them to, um, to run through walls. Can I, can I roll command for this? I mean, sure. You can roll command. Are you sure you want to actually take uh, Koya here, telling you what to do? I just said I'd volunteer to yeah, babysit. Yeah, 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 yeah that, 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 that's yeah. fine. He can uh, do that. I'm sure yeah. he's made no point, no mention at any other point throughout the rest of the mission about making a report to you, to your superiors. <laughs> you don't maybe recall that from a session um, or two ago. He is suitable for babysit duty. I'd rather our brother be protected. I do not care. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, Absolutely fine what, to babysit. What, what are yes. the chances that uh, Guattlemox is going to get back to base and give a slightly disparaging report? It doesn't matter. Of course. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, who, who cares who's in charge, can, really? Can, can, should I roll my command, shall I? I mean, if you insist, <laughs> I'll take a command at plus zero. I succeed. That's a one dos. Sorry, you succeed at the roll. At the roll. Cool. So I'm I think some to... bonuses to running through the walls. In order, in order to succeed, you would need to ensure that your squad doesn't, you know, hang you up. Do to what dry. they want to do. As I was saying, hang you up to dry after this. You know, really blame you for all the cock ups this mission. Am I doing? Um... No, that's fine. You, you, you. Hold your trust. Sorry, what was that, Ollie? Am I? Am I? Am, have I got three? I've got two people helping me, and I got the got command roll. One person helping you in a command roll, so it's a plus so ten. Plus yeah, it's a plus ten from Carl. And what was your dos day, Nicholas? Uh one dos. One dos, yeah, plus twenty. Cool, and then an extra plus twenty from my six. That's a plus forty to my strength roll, which is navigate, which I have trained, which is another plus ten. So that's <laughs> plus fifty. So ninety or under. So yeah, ninety or under. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it is significantly tougher going than you would like. What's your DOS there? Two, right? One. Uh, one. Significantly, significantly tougher going than you'd like. You run into more than a few press ganged workers, none of whom are happy to see you. Hot metals, last gun blasts, auto gun blasts. Thank you, Laurie. All of this nonsense has hurtled your way. Improvised May explosives, I? heavy weapons, all this kind of crap starts flowing in your direction. But you don't give two shits. You're not here to fight people. You're here to plow through easily accessible walls and then plow through another nearby easily accessible wall and repeat that ad nauseum until you get most of the way through this particular zone of industrial equipment. Just before we zoom on to the end of the session, Benji, what were you going to ask? I was about to say, may I make uh, one final roll before the end of the session to try and make our progress slightly easier? What are you thinking? I was what I was going to do was use the implanted loud hailer in my in my uh, helmet to try and make a command roll against the people who are trying to attack us. These okay. menials clearly they've been held down under the Venusian system. What I was going to do was I was going to use a command roll to say, "Come with us, fight with us to help." Get to the spaceport. Any who can board a, board a vessel and throw themselves on the Emperor's mercy will be offered a place in the Imperium. I would usually, a place of a place of betterness than what you've known. I would usually allow you at least a difficult role for it. In this case, I will say, bear in mind you're in most of these rooms for like a few seconds at a time. They hear bare snapshots of that and have zero context to any of it. All they know is a sudden sinking feeling, which many of them are only just coming to terms with. Uh, okay. That's fine. I just wanted to know if I could. I applaud your attempting. I mean, hey, trying for the non-combat solution is more than many people could or indeed would do. (laughs) 
What's with the nervous laughter? It's not nervous. <laughs> it's generally funny. And I think that's a good time to leave it. For this Lives of the Emperor's currency. Do not waste them. Indeed. <laughs> Do not waste them. Let alone an entire... He heart. gave us a blank check. <laughs> he, he did. But equally, if we come back having achieved the mission and brought a whole bunch of menials that can be used in a... A servitorization? Uh, no, why, why would you servitorize me? And what did you bring back after this mission, assuming you escaped? What what exactly will you have to show for it? A compliant hey. Venus. A yeah. compliant <laughs> death. <laughs> and a successful execution yes. of our commands. As well as, yeah, operational and tactical objective secured. Done. We went 100%. in, we did what we told to. Done. You completed your objective to the letter of what was requested. And only the letter of what was requested. And with that, remind us for next session. Shit, we're sinking. I'm <laughs> putting that in quotes, but sure. Oh, I'd like some unfortunate facts noted. Uh, Nick final blows the Psyker holding the city up. <laughs> and Benji's last message recommended correspondence. <laughs> Just before we killed him. Sorry, what was the Benji one? Uh, Benji's like last message just before we killed it was maybe Cusco should talk to it. Well, to be fair, in my last message was also Cusco should really shit talk him with the Imperial truth. Mm. Oh, it, I guess it, yeah, it, it wasn't really instructions for correspondence. Uh, any other reminders for next episode? Sure. Um, correlation, yeah, um, is not causation. All right, not sure what that relates to, but sure. Uh, it's basically a reminder that if anyone starts trying to pin this shit on us, like, hell, I mean, like, it could have just been a coincidence that our dude died as things we were, started falling. We were told, we to, we were told to disable the facility here. How were we to know that was going to bring down the entire fucking... Exactly. There is, there is no correlation between us killing a man and it just falling. Normally it's man without... Someone just, someone's life force vanishing? What kind of, what kind of stupid civilization would build a hive that had been kept up by someone sitting in a chair? <laughs> yeah, sure. Like it, it's totally ludicrous. Like having someone sitting in the chair as the basis of your civilization—that's purely bollocks. You'd have to be incredible dumbasses for that to be totally core to just basic existence. Any other reminders <laughs> for next session? Um, check if anyway or um, through the walls will be faster or safer. Uh, Koya is babysitting uh, Coatl Mox. I really appreciate that Coatlmox has lost his limbs this early on, because you realise, like, any other stage of the Great Crusade, you get functional org limbs, right? This early stage, he's going to get best quality replacements. <laughs> yeah, because we're right next yeah. to Mars. Exactly, you're right next to Mars. So it's going to be a great tech marine initiation. <laughs> I think as well, they're probably going to be, like, really, really interesting, unique, special things as well, right? Like, they are... I mean, it depends what Creed wants. We'll negotiate for it, but he's going to get, at the oh. very least, he gets a bionic skull bionic eyes and uh, bionic arm. Those those are the bare minimum of what we have to give him. Because <laughs> about skin. Skin. Te Te Tech Marines that. also get any one common quality for free. There you go. I will <laughs> say as well, he's right next to Mars. That means he's almost certainly going to get a freaking battle automata controller stuck in his arm. I don't know how big Tech Marines are for that, especially early in the Great Crusade. I'm just yeah, pretty, pretty good, pretty big for it. They've got Pravians. Point B. Any other reminders for next session? Um, that uh, fucking uh, first day the sergeant went safe. That's a very good call. What was that? Nothing. Any Any other... Other... <laughs> oh, first aid the sergeant went safe. Got you. Any other reminders for next session? Uh, overall objective is to make it to the... Is it Phasma? Yeah, Phasma Spaceport. Phasma Spaceport. You have no issue uh, remembering that one. <laughs> yeah, Phasma Spaceport, commandeer a vessel and get the hell off the planet. Also, a Vox message has been sent out to any and all friendly forces to meet us at the spaceport for extraction. Those that could hear over the screams of everyone Those else. Those could hear and were unable to make their way to the landing zone. Uh, any other reminders for next session? I think that's everything. Fair. In that case, questions. Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Yeah. 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 
commenting. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, everyone feeling like, okay about the plot? Um, yeah. How dead am I going to be with my compromised suit? How quick? Uh, no, if, if we get far enough down, we all die anyway. Like, so you've probably fallen between three and five kilometers already. If you had functioning skin, you would already be feeling the extreme pain. This atmosphere is incredibly caustic. Uh, I think it's mostly sulfur, if I recall correctly. Uh, yep. The nearest... Com- like, imagine falling into hell and the gravity is also pretty intense. All right. Ooh, that is what is... The point. That is what is currently happening to you. The only reason you're not already in agony is because you were already in agony. Um, so, yeah, with that being the point, would any potential um, future resistance to our um, evacuation, like, they also be feeling these effects and not properly be able to resist? Oh, 100%. Like, past a certain point, you're going to encounter people flying off up into the sky. Sweet. Um, and I do also have another question. It's like... Um, like, the voices in the back of our heads earlier, was that actually a thing, or was that just you fucking with us, or is that, like, too plot related? It is a thing. That is the voice of you not having had enough hypnotherapy. That's just your general consciousness at the back of your head. That's just a little part of you. It's always been there, and it always will be. Okay, cool. Valve's apparently fixed a crash for people who own over 25,000 games. That'll help you, and... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what was killing his computer. Why are you going to come at me like this? <laughs> <laughs> Any other narrative questions? It's all good. Cool. How, were in that room? Sorry. How many seats were in that room? Uh, a couple of dozen. They usually expect to have maybe a choir in there. Uh, What's this heretical choir you speak of? I mean, a really you, stupid way. A really stupid way of implementing civil engineering. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah. back on Earth, the Astronomicon currently getting set up in choir formation. Yeah, but the Astronomicon is something that needs to be implemented in that way. Yeah, and I'm sure like, these guys there just are and, around. There are orbital plates on Terra that do not require choirs of people sitting in chairs to stay afloat. Yeah, and, and obviously they have access to all the Terran tech. That's why they're doing so well against Terran tech right now. Or indeed why Mars canonically has trouble invading Terra during the Age of Strife. Um, it's not a... Um, I want to know if I've fucked up because of my lack of knowledge. Um, it's not known to us what those seats would have been used for. No, no, and it never will be because you destroyed cool. them. Cool, cool, that's fine. Whatever lets you sleep at night. Not an information mission. It was a disable this thing mission, and we disabled. Yeah, it. absolutely. You were given the task to disable them at any cost, and you disabled them at the maximum possible. <laughs> I, I had it's I had no, reasonable no, suspicion. No, 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 it was no, no, very it's, important. It's totally fine. I mean, like, who even cares how many people died on Miranda's beach just so that you could wipe out the entire place anyway? This is any and all any casualties. Of them make it. <laughs> any and all casualties, up to and including every single Marine and Imperial Army trooper that died on your watch. But the good news is. You have officially beaten Mackie's kill count. (laughs) 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 Any other questions? Any other feedback? Sorry, yeah, any feedback? Any other feedback? Uh, any feedback? Anything you liked? Anything you disliked? Anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time, you bastard? I like the voices. I love mm. the voices. I'm, I'm not sorry, going to play Raid of doubt and such. Sorry? Voices of doubt and such. I'm not going to play Raid. Ewan's attempt to play Wraith in Dark Heresy. No, 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 no. Wraith is totally different. The difference is in Wraith, right? Like, you play these voices in Wraith. I don't play them for you. It's other players play them. The difference here is I get to be everyone's voice, and I am so much more down with that. (laughs) Uh, Something I've been trying to get out for the last, like, 20 minutes is Creed, there is a Forge Master Elite Advanced type thing you can get if you're a Tech Marine. In fact, there's a fuck ton of them in uh, Rights of Battle for everyone to look at at some point, maybe. Rights of Battle? Rights of Battle, yes. Is that a splat or something? 
There's a splat, yeah. yeah. Little splats. There's also dread. There's 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 dreadnought rules in there, and there's um, first company veteran rules in there as well. Yeah, the dreadnought the dreadnought rules in there would just be the box noughts, which we don't really use at the moment. We're mostly using contemptors and leviathans, which are better. More stompy. So that was all that. I was just I, I was going to forget. No, that but it's fair to bring up, right? Like, uh, and obviously, it's all a negotiation. You let me know if there's something you want to use, and if there's something you want to use, but you feel it should be better because it's great crusade. Uh, but we're doing 30k. If, if you want to be ludicrously OP, it's fine. I'm tossing out 5d10 as the standard damage roll for you done fucked up. So I'm open to I would like to be a dreadnought because I lost all my arms and limbs. At the same time, you only lost one arm. I guess arms and limbs is a redundant statement. But yeah, you only lost one arm. You come back to me when you lose the other remaining limbs and your brain gets blown up and, and we'll talk. Uh, any other feedback? Nothing for me. Cool, so. and I'm glad people are liking the voices. It's fine, you know. We'll we'll eventually maybe see about maybe some willpower tests on that subject. Just you know, how are you feel. Hey, what? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to stand resolute against your every possible innermost inclination, not even indulging them just a little every now and then, then I mean, I did. It told me to kill it, and I did, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You won, right? And and as long as no one pins the blame on you for losing uncountable amounts of Archaeotech, or indeed millions to potentially billions of future Imperial citizens, then it's all good. Who even has body caps? Not Creed, to be fair. Uh, Glattelmox blew up. Yeah, he's probably melted. <laughs> Background Frankie. So... Uh, let's do some XP. <laughs> XP. If I can find the bloody... Where is the bloody character thing? Ah, uh, here we go. Cool, plot progression. Does anyone feel like you made any significant plot progression this session? Yeah, Complete that guy's the objective. Dead. That guy's yeah, dead. <laughs> I think that's probably extremely fair. Um, character development. Does anyone feel like you made any uh, character development? Uh, like you developed your characters this session? And if so, how? I've uh, solidified charging forward. I do greatly enjoy uh, that Cusco allows about 20 to 30 seconds of squad discussion. And if people haven't decided how they want to advance through a door before then, then he just walks through it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I have a better kill count now. <laughs> How is that character development for you? Just to check. Um, it, it's... I have no, nothing, fair enough. Else. Fair enough. I have nothing <laughs> else, because that was a fluke. Unless <laughs> a little part of you was hoping, a little part of you maybe knew that he was No, 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 no. I have no idea. Deep, deep down inside, I you kind don't of think wanted... So to claim all those skulls for the Empire. I don't throne. know if it's a good idea for us to have a sergeant who is as bloodthirsty as that. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, this is Nick speaking, thank you very much. Totally fine. You can you can bring all this up in the post mission debrief. And if you have any issues with how Sergeant Nazim handled or indeed mishandled things, mention it then. You all asked for this. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course. It's totally their fault. You know, they shot the guy, right? Oh. Anywho, uh, any other character... They put me in a position I could shoot the guy. Yeah, really, it was their fault for not stopping their sergeant from doing the thing exactly. they were actively trying to do when you acted before them. They put me in as sergeant. Any other character development? <laughs> yeah, Nicholas. Uh, I think uh, the psychic developed a, uh, a conscious in the Why end. Why did I ask you? No. Uh, you. Does anyone else have any other character development? <laughs> I think I, uh, you know, I didn't shoot, you know, shoot and ask questions later. I, I was there like, well, you know, if this guy's saying we may all die, you know, that's, that's something to take a little bit of a pause on just in case. And I was proven right. See, I want to say yes. I think that would be very valid development, except I feel like half the reason that you didn't shoot is because young Nicholas shot before you could. No, 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 no. I had the opportunity to shoot. I remember I left my turn for Carl and then Nick shot them. 
So I, I did say, oh, because I remember I went first in that battle round, right? And the guy was like, I, and I was like, tell me what, what, what's the rest of it? What's he going to say? Yeah, and then it's true. How do other people feel? Because like my, I'm not meaning to sass. This is this is a, a genuine perception. My perception of what happened there was less that that was development for Mackie and more that that was a bit of indecision for Ollie. No, it was definitely like I did. I wanted to hear what he said. I, I it was definitely wanted, but the reasons for wanting to hear what he said, I, 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 I I'm, I'm unsure on if it was more Mackie or Ollie. How does everyone else feel? Uh, am I am I out of line there with feeling that was more Mackie than Ollie? Because I, I'm totally willing to accept it if I was. I, I just want to know. I can see where you both. I can see both. No, sides. I see that. I can see that being in character, particularly the 30k Marine, because obviously there's not a huge amount of hypno indoctrination going on at the moment within the legions. Yeah, you've got just enough to get you the requisite skills, but you don't have the standardized brainwashing. Yeah. So obviously there's nowhere near enough time. All right. So um, I think I, can... I think that Mackie could definitely have been wanting to. Uh... Cool. In that case, excellence of role play. Does anyone feel like anyone else role played particularly well in that session? I feel like Cree did very well with his. I'm continuing to be blind, and also a death machine. <laughs> I am angry. Hear my chainsaw roar. I'm trying. <laughs> I just like ran around a bit mostly in that last compare. <laughs> yeah, but you did it with mock <laughs> I did that. Um, people kept saying, you know, he's three stories up in the air, and you just kept saying, no, I'll, I'll try and charge him, it'll be fine. Like, <laughs> Classic. The only, reason, guns. <laughs> the only reason that you didn't climb up to the top of the roof and try to echolocate drop yourself <laughs> down onto the guy is that he died before you could start climbing the wall. Otherwise, that's clearly where that was going. Yeah, that's kind of how I saw it. Like a swan leap off the top of the dome onto the guy. Exactly. Any other... Any other... <sighs> Excellent of roleplay nominations. Uh, Benji's, you know, general, like, you know, commands going out and stuff like that. That's yeah, exactly. Pretty... Koya does have a bit of a commanding air to him, doesn't he? You know, he's, he's really trying with that. What's this face you're making at me here, you Nicholas? <laughs> if he wants the command, he can have the command. Really? He's going to give that up that easily. <laughs> we had some um, character progression for the sergeant becoming more submissive. <laughs> <laughs> we... I, 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 I thought Nick actually became more assertive this session, but 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 he ended up I'm mainly just sassing. I would, yeah, I know you are. The I don't feel like Nicholas became more assertive. I think he got about this assertive last session. I would say everyone else in the squad was more submissive this session. The sergeant yeah, said, do the thing, and everyone else did the thing. You know, rather than maybe disagree or, or bring up the various tactical faults within the sergeant's logic, other than on a couple of occasions, they, they mostly just kind of went along with all the assorted things that he ordered them to do. And eventually... You achieved total possible casualties. <laughs> when you say it like that, it doesn't sound so good. Well, I everyone's mean, alive. No one's a dreadful. Really, you know. Uh, so, any other, any other excellent? Sorry, it's fun. Uh, any other excellence of roleplay awards? I'll take that as a okay. Okay, so I make that out to be in that case. <coughs> oh fuck! I've miscalculated slightly. Mm. 200,000 XP 135 experience points for session number 4 that's 20 points of plot progression completing the objective 20 points character development Cusco's, uh, Cusco Gordian not saying everything uh, Mackie and Mackie wants to understand the enemy 20 points excellence of roleplay Quattlemox's death regardless of physical state and Koya's commanding air plus 75 standard so that was one one three five, right? One three five, indeed. Which brings us on to everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlights. Young Nicholas, our erstwhile commander. Do you have any highlights for that session? Oh, I did, and I've gone out of my head. Um, Do you want us to come back to you? Yes, I'm going to lose off. Go back, <laughs> Benji. Do you have any highlights for that session? I know Creed's got some, so I'm just going to let Creed roll around to get his out of the way for uh, All right. Uh, in that case, Creed, do you have any highlights for that session? I only noted a couple, but I've quote from Nick. If it's a Chaos Demon, okay. 
<laughs> what a line. Uh, any of this? Uh, charging upwards is hard. Anything else? My hero, Mackie. <laughs> Use those ones that save me across the road. Big love, man. Big love. Oh, yeah, that's not an actual quote, is it? I should probably put a possessive in there. Uh, that's alright. I'm now plenty possessive of him. <laughs> I saved them. Yeah, because, like, not gonna lie, you were on five doff there across a road with, as described, hundreds to thousands of las guns. You very likely would have died there, barring. <laughs> player intervention. Someone might have saved you, but you were likely going to explode massively. At the very least, lose another fate point. Uh, so fucking Ollie bloody Mackie donating his one to save you, rather than stylishly getting across the road himself, really got you a get out of jail free that otherwise would have been horrendous. <laughs> cool. Any of the highlights, Creed? Uh, that's right. Mm. Ollie, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, averaging 0.5 Leroy Jenkinses per session. Any of the highlights? Nick, yet again, listens to the voice in his head, causing untold billions to die. That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> young Nicholas, young Nicholas goes full young Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> young Nicholas does a sour. This so, so arguably argu okay, a bit different because like I feel like this this was less predictable than Thower. Like to an extent, this was a bit of a sucker shot, right? But also, the population is going to be bigger than Thower. Thower was a total population of two billion. Yeah, it's I'm quite now, the fact I'm, that the I'm, statement come. Sorry, our first campaign now. Our first campaign of Space Marines has already dwarfed our Dark Heresy campaign uh, statistics <laughs> in terms of deaths. No, no, it's it's just you, the you're fact in that. Much you sorry. It's just the fact that it's the sa it's that statement of just like if we ha if I had a dollar for every time young Nicholas has killed a planet I'd have two dollars which isn't that much but it's weird that it's happened twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more than you'd hope for, right? Yeah. I mean, to be fair with us, how many people or players have not like destroyed a planet? And I, I, know, I think it's I think it's more expected for space marines. Also, is the thing like he was, yeah, in, more of a he was in more of a position. Well, like in if you destroy a planet in Death Watch or Rogue Trader, I kind of expect that a little bit. Destroying a planet in Dark Heresy is a bit more impressive. of an achievement. Yeah, no, totally. I don't disagree with that. It's just that we we've already dwarfed our uh, our, our, our our kill count by uh, or as an order of magnitude, perhaps. I I would say <laughs> the equivalent at your current power level would be if you got a sector cleansed. If you killed a sector's worth of people, maybe a subsector, then that would be about on the same level. Fair enough. I can see. It. I can see. Because like, think... Thower Thower was unquestionably on Nicholas's fault. There, there's no way <laughs> yes, that he 100%. shouldn't have seen that coming. That was totally on him. This was a. Okay, yeah, this was fairly heavily telegraphed, but also a lot of the telegraphing was out of character, not in character. So I cannot, in good consciousness, say, "Oh, what a shit character, fucking Nazim! How dare he not meta game?" Like, I can't. Yeah, I, 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 I took multiple times. Like, no, like, the, like this makes logical sense to Nazim. Like, there's nothing telling me no, that. I'm, this not, person. I'm, I'm not bashing you for it. I was actually you. a nut. You were the only person who did have logical clues telling you not to kill that person. They didn't outweigh any of the other evidence, but you were the only person who had anything saying, yeah, they might be talking bullshit. If nothing else, you had an impression of their emotional blueprint. You had uh, some knowledge from the anomalous enemy who you whose brain you consumed. Well, you I were the one the who was best... Dangerous. You that was it. were the one who was best placed to determine that they may have had at least a grain of truth to what they were saying. And you ignored all of your instincts and your evidence. Well, no, it was, it was like I knew that they were, they were important and dangerous. Well, you do not need to and, justify and, and yourself. And feeding Kobe that they, they were scared. Again, you do not need to justify yourself to me. And well, I had to assume they were scared of us. <laughs> and Didn't I tell you? Did you I not say, tell you? <laughs> wouldn't you say being scared of you turned out to be somewhat merited? Oh, oh yeah. yes. Any, that, that, that any, any like, other highlights for that session, Ollie? No, nothing else for me. Carl, you got any highlights for that session? Yeah. Um, spaghetti esque viscera. 
What's a line? What's a line? Any other highlights, Carl? Uh, covering fire! You've been rewatching Archer, I see. Archer. Uh, any... like Jessica Wolves has died. Yeah, yeah. Sad. Yeah, the day before my birthday. Oh, yeah. Who died? Uh, the woman Mallory. that plays Matt, yeah. Oh, yeah, Archer, yeah. 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 He's the one that plays Mallory. She was just Mallory. The, I mean, she was. I mean, like, not, yeah. in her, not in her real life, but like, I mean, Mallory, Mallory is so was her. Right? Yeah. Any other highlights, Carl? Uh, the Emperor is a space wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the findings of this session was that the Emperor clearly isn't a space wizard. Can we have the, can we have the, uh, the next highlight just be after the Emperor is a space wizard and we haven't noticed? <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'll put it in brackets. Uh, any of the highlights, Carl? He's armless. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really get that one, no one was armless. Alright, uh, any of the highlights? Um, uh, that's it for me, thanks. Okay. Oh, wait, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of a good way to put it, but I'm just going to go with uh, Brother Sergeant takes the rear guard. Like, regard in air quotes. Yeah. And the brother sergeant did take the rear guard, right? Boldly, boldly advancing up the rear. See? It's not just me that makes the innuendos. It's not an innuendo. It's an... It's in your endo. What do you call it? Double entendre? It begins with E. No, um... Euphemism? Euphemism, thank you. It's a euphemism. It's a euphemism for cowardice, you see, because the brother sergeant ordered everyone to advance and then advanced up the rear. Any of the highlights, Carl? Uh, yeah, that's it. Sorry, Nicholas, I love you, and you've been doing an absolutely sterling job, but I also sterling feel it is 100% like, on me to prod you with this shit. <laughs> you and everyone else in the squad, whoever was sergeant, will be getting the same deal. It's just more likely to end badly for me because it's me. <laughs> no, not even slightly. Like, you're, you're fine. I think you'd be doing uh, an absolutely, I will say it again, an absolutely sterling job in an extremely difficult scenario. Um, but I'm here to be the niggling voice of doubt in the back of your head. And no matter what you do, I will try to find something that can cast a reasonable doubt on it. And with that note, do you have any highlights for this session? Uh, There's three stories in the air. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, new kill count. Really riding that high, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Uh, Ollie, how many um, bullets did you use on the beachfront? 50, I think. No, 35, something like 35 or something like that. It was 50. Was it fair? Or was it just straight 50? Yeah, it was bang on. Uh, 50, 50, 50 bullets versus one bullet. One bullet wins. Um, I would like to say that you had a whole squad there. Like, Yeah. yeah. But, you know, did any of you actually hit the guy? Because it was I, uh, that's, Nazim that's, that's who got the kill point. shot. I yeah, admit. but who took down the armour? It's true. Yeah, I mean, but you see, the That's thing was, there was a bother in my killings. an mm -hmm. awful lot like support work <laughs> and, you know, support work, sure, but any grunt can do support work. Well, yeah, but the point is, is he, like, uh, I say, if you consider a bullet like ammunition, like, the rest of the squad in the same way as a tool that he used to, like... <laughs> sure, I, I, if you I, uh, consider the squad like ammunition, if you consider them more like an attack dog... <laughs> I was going off... One, one killing blow versus 50 killing blows. Yeah, <laughs> Nazim kills everyone with one bullet. I've got it. Any other highlights? In the <laughs> I like to think that my uh, my kill's more honourable. I look them in the oh, eye. most definitely. But uh, <laughs> honour doesn't win a war. And he did win the war. And there is nothing but war. So... <laughs> you ever heard the concept of a Pyrrhic victory? It's not important. <laughs> uh, any other highlights, Nicholas? <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I think that'll do. Uh, any highlights for that session, Benji? Why are you using the wrong grenades? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that really vexed you, didn't it? 
I think so many things this time. Like, you've turned him into fucking Leandros from Bloody Space Marine. The Codex of Stardust does not support this action. <laughs> Constantly. He's there going, what are you doing? This is the wrong tactical maneuver as you fuck shit up. Oh, it's hilarious. Because He's not even Captain Titus in it in a cool way. Yeah, He's exactly, just doing right? it badly. Like, and she was bitching to me about Leandros literally last week. <laughs> you've made... Just oh. It's it's two D ten versus one D ten plus eight. Any other remi- uh, any other miners? Any other highlights? For, uh, Benji. Super glue is better than rope. Okay. So you remember when that like box of grenades was going to be thrown, <laughs> and Ollie was asking for rope. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, everyone trying to stop your Nicholas from blurring himself up. Any of the highlights for uh, Benji? Shall we breach and clear? Walks through door. <laughs> I think we already got that. Um, oh. Yeah, averaging 0.5 Leroy Jenkins per session and another one somewhere. <laughs> oh, I've got a new one for that, actually. In which case, what do you want? Compliance! <laughs> I, when do you uh, that, want That's it? kind of a comma situation, is the thing. Uh... You and your commas. Creed's, uh, come one, Creed's one word summation of the Great Crusade. What was that? Compliance. Oh, right. <laughs> Just screaming the word compliance very loudly. He does scream it a lot to his credit. One of my favourite 40k words. <laughs> it's like your standard ad mech thing as well. I mean, yeah. they still use it in 40k, technically. Uh, they even use Expeditionary Fleet on occasion. Any other highlights, Benji? No? Cool. Okay. I, I, I'm trying to sum up, like, because everyone else, like, including all the 4th and 6th Legion members on this station, are all suffering because they don't have our Lyman's ear, so I suppose it sucks to not be part of the 2nd Legion. Yeah, so what's probably happening everywhere else, for comparison, is the entire 2nd Legion spontaneously became aware that the st- entire floating hive had started falling, whereas Legions 4 and 6 wouldn't have noticed for a minute or two, maybe. Um, which means the Vox has exploded with traffic as Legion 2 desperately tries to tell the other two Legions to pull the fuck out, and the other two Legions tell them to get the fuck stuffed. Well, that's all. Yeah, yeah I can say, it sucks to not be part of the second <laughs> Legion, eh, guys? Any other highlights, Benji? I think it's everything. Cool, you're Nicholas. You said you had another highlight. Uh, yes. Um, walls over alleyway any day. Cool. Anyone got any final highlights? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, it was added, but I recalled um, fucking uh, he's three stories up. Yeah, It'd be a yeah. real shame uh, yeah, if only exactly. the Imperials had environmentally, environmentally sealed suits, wouldn't it? <laughs> cool. Does anyone have any final words for the recording? Expo!